cool socks. Let's talk about them. That's where Stance specializes. That's right. Stance.com uh, is here to deliver you cool socks from hot brands. Which brands, you might ask? Well, how about the Goonies? How about Wu-Tang Clan? How about Disney? Uh, also for the children. Uh, Bob Marley. The National Basketball Association. They've got socks, but it's not all just licensed socks. They got some cool styles and other stuff like that. Check it out. Their premium line of socks. They send some of these socks over and you put, you put them on your feet. You could wear these socks. Dang. Stance has the perfect gift for every punk and poet on your list. Go see for yourself. It's easy. Just head on over to stance.com and pick out some styles that you think that they might be like, uh, you know, to be into. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. Is the stress of daily life weighing on your body? Well, look, whether you're, it says here, wait, hang on. It says whether you're an elite athlete or someone like me, what are you trying to imply here? Man, wow. That's, that's rough. Either way, if you're just having a rough time, you're trying to make through the day tension-free, Theragun can help. Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it's quiet like an electric toothbrush. The Gen 4 Theragun doesn't just feel good, it gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension using that signature percussive therapy, which goes 60% deeper than vibration alone. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just the stresses of everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. It's got an OLED screen and all this other stuff. Uh, you know, it's just, it learns from your behaviors and suggests guided routines, all of that sort of stuff. Theragun's trusted by 250 professional sports teams like Real Madrid and elite athletes like Paul George, DeAndre Hopkins, Maria Sharapova, hundreds of thousands of customers. Wow, that's a whole lot of people. Try Theragun for 30 days starting at only $199. Go to therabody.com slash bomb right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash bomb, therabody.com slash bomb. Welcome to the Giant Bombcast. It's November 30th. Video games are almost over. Thank Whoa, you. Thank it feels God. like it. God. It feels like oh, God. it. There's only like three <laughs> left this year, right? Uh, is it three or is it? I mean, there's Halo and then what, what else you got? Because like what? Like Advanced Wars got pushed. Advanced hmm. Wars. Heavenly oh. Bodies. That's coming out next week. That oh, right. Game yes. Thing mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Space astronauts. Physics C grabbing on to stuff with yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Two that games. That's, <laughs> that might oh. be it. Not bad. <laughs> well, well the, yeah. the game awards are next week, so maybe something just like drops out of that for people oh, yeah. to to get into. Um, the old Keeley surprise. <laughs> the old Keeley surprise. <laughs> wow. Oh jeez. <laughs> Like no, made it you. into the podcast, got a title already. Yeah. Um, what if what if Keeley Shadow drops his own game? What if he like uses it to like oh, do a two hour preview for a game he's been working on? But like only he's, he's like, been working on. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just suddenly just this huge long segment. It's just like what you, you assume it's an Amazon game, like some sponsored deal, but no, it's yeah. just like Keeley Corp. And he's just like just, you know when I was in Death Stranding, I got to thinking. <laughs> um, this is the Game Awards sin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's called Keely Surprise. Show. He actually yeah, told Keely's the story surprise. of the of how he ended up in uh Death Stranding on a podcast he's doing that I have that I guested on. It's uh like a Game Awards pre show, like a four episode thing. We've done the first oh, wow. three because the the fourth one will be done after the show airs. Oh cool. Um hmm. so we haven't recorded the last one yet, but uh but those have been super fun. I think they're, those are only on Spotify. That's a bad plug for that. But that's yeah. Go go look for that. It's on. It's a Game Awards pre-show 
podcast. Ooh, if it's on the spot, if it's a Spotify joint, do y'all play uh, licensed music at the end or before it, Ooh. during it? Ooh. No, but we spend like half an hour talking about how the vaccines are not real. Um, oh, so, okay, you know, that was part of the contract. Um, the, That's the so usual weird, Spotify deal. Yeah, yeah, all the yeah, top yeah. talent on Spotify. Love that <laughs> shit. Um, no, it was, it was super fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was super fun to do. Was that um, the Keeley surprise? Yeah, that was no. it. Yeah, that's what you're getting instead of Moderna. You're getting world the exclusive surprise. booster shots. Um, I, I, for for what it's worth, I'd take a vaccine if Keeley made it or had a hand in making it. Oh yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll say I wouldn't. I'll say I would not. Would you take a vaccine if Kojima had a hand in making no. it? No, 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 what? No, that's just sugar water. Nano machines, son. Yeah, no, sugar that's, water. Yeah. It's straight up nano machine. Yeah. See the fucking all the shit in his games. You're gonna all inject his mind into my body. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's like, oh, what? I've got a baby growing out of my ster like sternum now. It's an that's a real baby. Okay. Oh, okay. not real. It helps you see ghosts. Kojima put a baby in me. <laughs> Is that too long for a podcast title? Probably. No, you can do whatever. I mean, it's a thousand words, but go for it. I don't do know. If someone wrote it. Up? Up, someone hit us up on Twitter after last week's and said like that Google surfaced some kind of um, survey for them asking if the podcast title was offensive. Oh my god! Mm. What was oh, no. it? What was Wait, name? we're on a list uh, now. To, was it Pokemon? We'll have to go look it up. We can't say it. It's too hot. You have to go look <laughs> it up, and. Go to giantbomb.com. In fact, memberships are on sale. If you want to become a premium Giant Bomb member, yeah, there has literally never been a better time than right now. Uh, you can go to giantbomb.com slash upgrade for more details on that. It's a hot savings. $35 gets you a year of action. Um, and We got action. Uh, we got action. And surprise. Yeah, hot action. action. Hot action? Yeah, it's fucking 90 degrees today. This What? <laughs> I got an email from a, a publisher saying like, hey, we're sending out some like Christmas holiday gift type <laughs> things. It's a sweatshirt for those cold days. And I just wanted to respond to be like, where are the cold days? I did They're this right to here. Myself. It's snowing. I'm it's looking snowing. at snow. Yeah. What? Is it snowing outside? Snow yeah, where I live. Yeah. Wow. Oof. I, yeah. I, that's, I, have, I, I can't remember the last time I saw snow. What about Except snow on like my... a road already? Is that the first yeah. line to a poem you're about to read? or Yeah, and here's the second phrase. Except for on my television because we've been watching Frozen over and over again in this. <laughs> oh, yeah, let it go. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, my uh, daughter also twist? just breached that particular uh, levy recently. And fuck oh, my me, goodness. No turning back. I yeah. love Adina Menzel, man. Sure. Um, Adina. I... Ad Ad Adina Badet. What was it? <laughs> yeah, I forget. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, whatever heard. The way he said it. It was no, just that's... gobbledygook. <laughs> that's because he's got a certain je ne sais quoi. Travolta. Yeah. What, what, can you, what can you say about Travolta that hasn't already oh, been how much time said got? in the Inquirer or, you know, I did it, going clear? I did um, <laughs> <laughs> Frozen has reminded me. I think Frozen is, a fine, is fine. I think Frozen is fine if you watch it's it once. Right, yeah. um, okay. Sure. You know. <laughs> And we we've been watching Cinderella, but like now now Cinderella's been outclassed by mm. uh, by Frozen. John Leguizamo, it's, right? It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a it, like it's been a real reminder of just how much I fucking hate musicals and musical oh. theater and that style oh. of songwriting and storytelling that's just like, and I'm walking over here and doing this, and it's just like fucking die. <laughs> Fuck wow, Hamilton. dude! These motherfuckers. Oh, you don't like Hamilton. Fuck Hamilton? When I first should... when I first heard the music from Hamilton, and I and I heard the premise of Hamilton, not knowing any, anyone involved in it, uh, who they were, uh, any sort of like you know what what my first reaction was like, did the clan write this? Like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing to hip hop? Um, <laughs> you gotta see it. Oh, the stage moves around. around. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it's if, you a very, if you don't like very Hamilton, good. then uh, you should check out Moana, which is written by the same. Okay. The music is written by yeah. Lin Manuel Miranda. But that Moana's dope as fuck too. It is. That's the problem. Is that the, the Frozen is like it's that old school Disney thing where it's mm -hmm. just like da da da. da. It's real yeah. classical bullshit. Whereas Moana at least has some songs in it that slap, and also it has uh, the guy from Flight of the Concords and The Rock. So that's yes. Pretty cool. Yes. Oh yeah, Jermaine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he's a crap. No, I've been hearing the rock rap a lot lately. Yeah. And, oh yeah, on, on TikTok, and well, it's just been. Well, that's yeah. 
I don't, I don't want to hear that. That's not, that's not, that's not nice that that got out there in that way and went viral in that specific way. Um, what did you think of his verse in that, uh, in that track? I, it's kind I, of rough. I, I hate it. I hate it. It's, it's just like, it's like, uh, of the, like, look at what Shaq has done in the hip hop arena. Yeah. But like Charles, credible. Charles Barkley. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, Shaquille O'Neal has put out, and some of them didn't even come out. I think it was, there was like an album that was supposed to come out on like 9-11 that like didn't ever get released or something, but like, you know, there's an unre- unreleased Shaq album is dope. Um, that's, you know, that's Sha- like, Shaq knew to team up with the Fushnikens, you know, like there was some, there was some interesting, crazy shit there. Right. So um, anyway, in terms of, I, I don't even like, I don't know why I just immediately went to that. Just Shaq is a celebrity as is the rock, I guess is probably, uh, Ken Griffey Jr. has a pretty good verse uh, with Kid Sensation, who was one of Sir Mix-a-Lot's posse um, on a track called The Way We Swing uh, Ooh, that I would swingers. take over the Rocks um, the, lifestyle. the Rocks verse here. Yeah. Um, who was the best uh, WWE rapper and Rikishi. was it Grandmaster Sex? Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. That, that track, I'm a Bad Man, still goes so hard. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, look... That Cena album is better than it had any uh, oh, right fair, to be. Yeah, fair, fair. Yeah. Uh, but, and, and uh, you know, Macho Man, Randy Savage, of course, put out his rap album, which is fascinating, um, <laughs> but maybe not good. Uh, I remember the Brian Kendrick having like a couple fun lines when he was uh, going by Spanky okay. in uh, early 2000s. I so I, I can't remember who exactly was all in this cipher, but you know we used to go to like a lot of like events for wrestling games. Like THQ was rotten with just like come on out, we're showing the game and doing a superstar tournament that Kofi Kingston's going to win again um, yep. because if, at that time he was the only person backstage playing games. Um, <laughs> and um, and I got to I was at a like a fan access event before like some guys were getting ready to go out in the ring and do stuff. And there was just a circle of I want to say I'm trying to remember exactly who it was. It was like Cena and Christian and like the Dudleys. And I that's nice. Be, and they were they were just freestyling. Wow. It was the fucking oh. weirdest. And you're just like and, they, and they're not bad because like all they you know, they just fucking hang it's, out backstage. Yeah for most of their like like so many hours together doing all this stuff then it was like huh riffing um, is kind of like that's all they do on their promos anyway yeah right? it's yeah like, kind of but yeah but it was just like i was just like f- fucking blown away <laughs> that this was the, and then i got to stand next to that and be like wow that's fucking nuts i can't believe i'm here doing this this is fucking <laughs> weird <laughs> um and and yeah so i don't know maybe there's some more you know ron killings you know our truth he's he's got He's, oh, he's putting out tracks. Out. Yeah. Did yeah. Booker T so. ever do any? I, I seem to remember there being a song or something. I don't Because he, he always had so much interesting stuff to talk about. Yeah. Like, he had a song you made know. about him, didn't he? That, yes. Uh, Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Up. Right. There's and that. in that music then... video, they were just in a truck with Booker T just standing there and Bad Bunny <laughs> dancing around him. It's good. And then Booker good. T was way ahead of the curve. He sued Activision before California did. <laughs> um so you know is it yep exactly yep. leave it out um what do i say people we get together and we talk about some video games okay all right. okay. okay and perhaps some uh i don't know just some shopping did anyone buy any, i don't you know i feel like we would be remiss to not you know uh uh celebrate the <laughs> capitalism uh the cat the, yes the capitalism anyone buy anything religion. cool i, I any bought a damn deals? tv i bought a tv I did too. nice I just wow. a little, a little shitty one but my, my wife we, we've got the living room and an old tv was in there and it wasn't picking up the wi-fi so ah. the wife wanted a new tv and i'm like all over it and i'm like Oh yeah, let me go buy this chip. But we just got like a TCL four series, but it was like a fifty five inch. But it was like two hundred bucks off, so why not? Nice. We partook yeah. in yeah, the Black I Friday up, savings. I I ended up getting the, I guess this is the current model. It'll be replaced next year, presumably. But I got the LG OLED, the oh. the, the C one, yes. the C one. Yes. 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 I figure I need to see what these consoles can do with 
what like variable it's refresh fucking and, amazing. and 100 it's right fucking amazing. stuff yeah i just definite, you know I just right piece. and just like that amazing definite screen right yeah I've, also, I've got this right i've off. got a cx uh or is it c10 i forget um yeah. 55 inch up in my works. office here it's beautiful Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. The, B, the B6 is a great TV. It's going to go in the living room, and, and it will it will have Frozen on it. Um, yeah, for wherever the foreseeable sixty hertz future. shit Olaf. is needed, yeah. burnt in to your screen. Yeah, exactly. But you're yeah. you're you're in one hundred and twenty land now, baby. Yeah, Can't yeah. Go back. Well, I mean, uh, I, I'm looking at you at one hundred and sixty five hertz right now. So one hundred and twenty hertz is like trash tier like yeah. television. Oh, what sure. the fuck is that? One hundred twenty. This is seventy twenty four, man. You can't see shit. Yeah, that's right. I I, I get fucking. Go out and look in the dumpster at 120 hertz. Where it belongs. <laughs> Where it belongs, god damn it. I bought... Jeff Bacalar, he played Wii Sports. Real quick, um, I bought this camp you? chair that sits two people. <laughs> oh, Holy whoa, shit. Whoa, whoa. That's a whoa, thing. It's camp? like a love, love seat. seat. It's, it's a like a little seat. chair. Or, I mean, it's a chair, but it's like a tears. couch. Jan, I'm not sure you needed to open it, but good for you, pal. Can I tell you the one thing I bought? Yes. yes. I, didn't, yeah, I didn't buy anything on Black Friday, but... <laughs> I did, for reasons that are obvious, go on eBay and pick up a old PC big box of Omicron, the Nomad Soul. For obvious uh, reasons, yeah. For obvious, it Gotta was on get my before the prices go I mean, up. I, that's I mean, what I was I'm, thinking. I was, I was thinking, I don't have that one. I don't have that one, and God yeah. knows it's just going to shoot up now. So, it's, uh, it's on the also. Way. If you're pronouncing it Omicron, uh, <laughs> I, you're just not allowed. You're just not allowed to get a booster. Oh, uh, that's. That's the new rule there. I've been Please. saying Irish name. I've been saying Omarion. Yeah, B much uh, better. I found this investment property go. in my garage. <gasps> I um, was looking for one of those last week. I oh, thought nice. I had the one. The price on these Blood on the Sands for three hundred and sixties have shot up as well, uh, in the Makes wake of sense. it being added to backwards compatibility because you can't purchase it digitally. You can't. I tried to. I know. I was so yeah. pissed. I tried um, to. <laughs> I literally yeah. tried. It was like the it was the fiftieth episode of the No Clip podcast, and I was like, "Well, there's only one thing we can talk about," <laughs> yeah. and then I couldn't get it, so we just did it about something else. Bomber. Did you get one thing real quick? quick? Like that's probably. Whoa! Yes, cool. so, this is a PCB. This is a Pico uh, oh. fighting board. Uh, it's made with a little Raspberry Pi, little tiny one. Delicious. But it's a fighting board that allows you to play cool. your arcade sticks on like PS4, PC, Ooh. Switch, shit like that. Thing is, it's 25 bucks, whereas the Brook fighting boards are like 80 or something like that. Yeah. Um, $25, the little little Raspberry Pi, Pi project, that's the neat. Pico. Did you just drop it? Nice. Did you shatter it? Uh, well, Jason, that's, you that's that's and break it? Yeah. Roll over it with your chair? Well, bucks. they're cheap. I'll get another one. <laughs> yeah, keep them coming just get like five and hide them around the house just in case do they all have yeah. ryu on them oh uh, yes they do okay that's cool right. Right. some some lawyer is going to get in touch about that i think yeah. okay sorry uh, yeah about, about ryu it's fine. um we sports the hottest latest um <laughs> yeah what's this game about so uh there was a game called we sports that came out with the nintendo wii I don't know what year it was. Maybe it was like 06. I have one of those. Uh, apparently, I don't because I went and looked for it and I can't find it. But I'm bringing this up because uh, I went away for Thanksgiving. And we're not going to talk about the Thanksgiving. But what we can talk about is my son, who clearly has a blind spot in his life because he was born 10 years after this thing came out. Oh, yeah. Oh, had man. no uh. idea what it was. He sees this thing and he's just like, what is this? The Think <laughs> about it. He had no idea. It just... And now there's nothing like it anymore. Like, you can't just go... Like, no one has the wands. No one's playing tennis or bowling or doing any of that shit. It completely came and left before he was even alive. And then he comes down to this place where this is the only thing my family had down there and he's like what is this dad and i'm like i haven't seen this in 15 years and we start playing it and i'm like holy shit this is so much fun he he's play he's playing it all night long we're up to like 1 a.m playing tennis the same goddamn thing over and over again it's amazing we sports is amazing and uh, that's really all I got to say about it. It's, I found it uh, amazing that he just he's just living his life and he doesn't even know about it because it's over. We is over. 
Switch Wii doesn't have fun. that really. They should. It's bu- it's bullshit that there's not a Wii Sports game on Switch. Just That's want to true. come out and say that. It is it is a fucking crime. And they put one two switch out. It's the That's same nice. thing. It is a fucking crime. I will double down <laughs> on saying that. Like, where the fuck is it? Where the fuck? Where is the game? Where's the bowling game? You got HD Rumble. I want a Wii Sport. I want to switch sports. Switch sports HD switch Rumble. Sports. Okay. Switch okay. sports okay. HD switch sports. Rumble. We're totally Please. they're, they're totally John gonna Travolta re-release. Over here. They're gonna totally gonna re-release the Wii as like a Wii classic in like three, four yeah. years. Fine. Like yeah, additional Wii motes. That's what they're gonna do, I, huh? You know what? Like that thing has it's been fifteen years since it came out. And fifteen it's just wild to me that there's don't, all these people walking around like Earth that. and they're just like, I didn't know a world where you had motion controller, you know, kind of fun in your home. And now it it's just gone. I don't know where my Wii is. I don't know where it went. I found a Wii U in my closet today. <laughs> that's and nope. I guess that's... That ain't uh, it. Can't that you ain't play it. old you, games yes. on it? Yeah, yeah. You can put okay. the sensor bar into it and use Wii totally. remotes. And like, it'll, you all can right, totally so do all that stuff there. Yeah. Just light but a I candle. Couldn't find you don't even Wii need the sensor sports. bar. Just, huh? Oh, right. Yeah. The candles. That's right. That works. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did that. Yeah. We did that once. Uh, that was fun. But, you know, uh, that, as I just rediscovered it in a huge way. And it's it was just amazing to me of like watching a human being who is just like a Rocket League, NHL, Roblox like pro, and then he's just like, oh my god, I can't believe this is a thing. And it's just it was just wild to watch unfold in front of me. So what's say. next? Dance Central? Are you going to connect? DDR, up? What are we doing? dude. Resort, baby. Yeah. Go to no, the so resort. Yeah, Wii Sports Resort. Uh, was, was Resort good though? I don't remember. Sure, it was like if a that fencing was good. one or like a sword fighting one, right? Not not as not mm. as good. Well, I think good. no, it's because you know cool. what? Even the even the often overlooked baseball game on the original Wii Sports is pretty good. It's solid. I like, guess yeah. it's, pr- it's pretty good. So. Yeah, I mean, he's done. We've done the uh, the DDR in arcades, and uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. But I, am, I'm, I also I'm found a connect massive, too. I'm drawing a massive blank. What was the game? The disc golf game was that on PlayStation or something? What was that? Oh shit! No, that was Move. Just it was Move. Me. I think wasn't it PlayStation Move? Yeah, PlayStation uh, was Move. It? Yes. Oh, the there was disc- like a Move Sports thing. Yes, it was fucking yes, good. It, it, it was good. It was good. Remember, was good. I just remember playing disc golf, and I was like, "Oh, that wasn't Resort. That was something else." Yeah, that thing I was, was good. Was, I, I don't like, remember any of that Move <laughs> controller stuff being good. Wasn't that, there was the game where there, there was, the, was the, you're the dude in the office chair? That was a Move. That was a move. Yeah, yeah. that's yes. true. Yes. Yes. Right. Going downhill, or something. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Anyway, what a blast from the past. I gotta right. say, yeah, yeah. Really so, awesome. that's, that's super special. Cool. Yeah, something fun, fun to do if you're into tinkering around and you know getting getting loose with it, as they say. Mm-hmm. Is they'll sell sure. a mm-hmm. dolphin bar, which is a Wii sensor bar with a Bluetooth sensor Ooh. hooked into it. Uh, that. Um, that is USB. So you can plug that into your PC and it will, nice. you can sync the Wii remotes to it. And it also is a sensor for the Wii, Re- Wii remotes for awesome. emulating that stuff on a PC. Yeah. It's actually surprisingly, surprisingly compact for, for what it is. Um, when you get it all set up, like, I, I did I like that this. once and was like, Oh, that works. And then never did it again <laughs> because. Okay. Like, okay. Um, Dolphin Shadow's suggesting. Huh? Uh, Johann yeah. Sebastian Joust, which is a game I have not okay. thought about in That's, about ten years. The, yeah, yeah, right. It's the only good PlayStation Move <laughs> experience, right? And I'll I'll put PlayStation VR in it. No, maybe not. But um, yeah, Joust, right? We put a hole in the wall at the <laughs> office. Someone, I some intern <laughs> threw a chair. What Ben? No, no, it was I don't. Know, it might have been Ben. I don't remember. But someone there it might have been Patrick. It was not an intern, but someone threw a chair and put a hole in a wall playing joust. That's, Excellent. Uh, it got a little. It got a little heated. That's a game. You, you, no one's playing joust. No one's getting together and playing joust anymore. People were playing that. That was like the GDC Park thing. Is people were playing that outside with a laptop in yeah. in the park near uh, Moscone and stuff like that. That was like the. I, I've only played that game outside. Oh, All really? right, it's probably the the safest way to do it. I missed um, the boat on this. I'm sad. Yeah. Well, you were still in elementary school. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was learning about it was time Squid tables. Game before Squid Game right. was squ- Squid Game. Um, let's talk about Let's Tap. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about Let's Tap, the most innovative game of the last 30 years. A cardboard box turned Part into hours of entertainment. It wasn't even like get your own cardboard box. It was like, no, no, no. You will purchase our official one. Yeah, well, so in the U.S., you had to get it. I think it was a. I think the cardboard box was a Best Buy exclusive. Oh, nice. <laughs> so <laughs> you had to, if you didn't want to supply your own cardboard box, uh, you had to Jeez. go there or get the Japanese version. Um, yeah, Wii Sports. It turns out. Uh, so good, so good. Still, still pretty good. I'm, I'm that not morning, what about, man. I, that when oh. that, when that console came out, me and my four of the buddies all went down to the local GameStop, all picked up our Wii's, all went back to one of my friends' house, and just like it was like the most magical ten hours ever. It was just like this is fucking insane. This this yeah. uh, this this machine is in, like the only game that was any good. I remember at launch was was Wii Sports, only one I cared about. Yeah, because they had that samurai mm-hmm. game that was like not right. Red Steel, called? Red Steel, Steel yeah, oh, right, yeah, wow. all that stuff. But I, man, that I'm was still chasing so that dragon. I'm still chasing that Wii Sports day one dragon baby. Where's that at? I like, need that fix yeah. again. Scratching my neck. Ugh, I want it. I want it. I now it. have to look up like what is the what was the Wii launch? What did the Wii launch look like in the US? Yeah. Oh, was, I bet uh, there was that zombie game, zombie zombie. zombie, zombie, zombie. No, oh, no, no, that, that, was, was, that was Wii U. That was Wii U. That was Wii U. Oh. Yeah. yeah, what else was on okay. the Wii? Was there a So Trauma Center, Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam was a oh, wow. launch game. That was a bad. I remember right. sitting in my office trying to review Downhill Jam and just being so fucking pissed at having to play that fucking game. <laughs> um, was it Sight Truck launch or is this website full of shit? Yeah, that seems that makes wrong. Sense. I remember that. Yeah. Well, I think it was. Okay. Sideways, I think. Yeah. That one? yeah. There was at least one where you, where you did the car thing. It was definitely yeah. like oh, a right. monkey Twilight ball. Princess. I mean, like, like, yeah. Twilight Wasn't there Princess, a Wario game? There was like a was smooth, smooth moves. Smooth Eventually, moves. that was not a launch game, but that really? that did come out. Was that and then there was a you know, like, was launch? There was a bunch of yeah, Raving Rabbids was launch. Uh, that was but great. then there's just great. a bunch of third party like Call of Duty three and Happy <laughs> Feet and nice uh, George Romero Happy Feet Carbon. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, SpongeBob SquarePants Creature from George the Krusty Krab. All the hits. Oh. Um, you know, when they're like, oh, there's a system launching. We've got to get launch games out for it. And they just dump <laughs> a bunch of stuff on it. That in retrospect, you're like, none of those are, none of those really make a ton of sense on the Wii. Other than I bet they all made a fuckload of money by being early games those, on the Wii. And all those yeah. bundles. Like you could not buy that without, I just remember that being yeah. such a, I mean, they're still here. Alive and well bundles are, but. Like the tennis racket. Uh, yeah. The knockoff oh, Wii Zapper, yeah. God. the Spatula. steering wheel, mm-hmm. steering wheel. Still got that steering wheel somewhere. Oh man. yeah, the steering wheel was official, and the um, the the gun thing was was official for like that Link's oh, crossbow right. thing. Oh, yeah. Link's crossbow. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that that worked. There was the tennis so racket. Many. I want to say it was some knockoff. Yeah. Thing. Was there, there was a, a microphone into the Wii Mote? No. Like no, they the when Animal Crossing speaker. came out, they had a the Wii Speak was a thing you plugged in and put like on top of your TV, and that was like meant to be like a room oriented voice chat yeah. thing. Mm. Uh, that was for Monster Hunter as well. Mm. Yeah, we used it support. once, and it, it was fucking terrible. So yeah, I used it. I remember using it once for for Animal Crossing on the Wii, it was and really was like, bad. okay, I don't need to, I don't need to talk to people. Um, yep, I'm gonna go find uh, my Wii like, now. Yeah. That's where Battlefield got the idea from. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2. The second evolution. Danny, it's the here. second evolution. Uh, which that, see, second evolution sounds like a cooler name because then it sounds like it's a fighting game spinoff. I'm like, oh, yeah, second evolution. Cool. <laughs> yeah, right on. They added it is fighting like, in some ways. And, some, of, yeah. some of the dinosaurs fight each other. The dinosaurs are often fighting the park guests, but that's kind of a one sided battle. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is the latest from Frontier Developments. Uh, this game has been like a, a pretty, you know, a, a staple of this household. My wife played absolutely loads of the first game, so it's been like on in the background a lot. Um, but I didn't really play it until uh, this one came out and I, we were interviewing the uh, creative director for, or the game director for the 
most recent no clip podcast but i was i was playing um a bunch of it sort of coming in pretty fresh and it's it's a weird like amalgamation right because like frontier make both you know zoo tycoon and then also they have you know a long history of making various roller coaster games from mm-hmm. roller coaster tycoon 3 to thrill ride to um, planet coaster um God, and this thrill, kind of thrill like, ride thriller right there was a bunch of like really weird ones they did on consoles in the middle. i still have that game installed on my xbox it's just like between moving hard drives from xbox to xbox to xbox like i right. think i still have that thing just residuals <laughs> yeah yeah and it's so, so it's kind of like a it's like you know half of it is the creature care aspect of a type of a zoo game and then also the sort of like management stuff of a of a park game um but it's it's good. The second the sequel does a lot to like fix the some of the variety issues with the first ones. You're basically uh, creating uh, these Jurassic Park parks, Jurassic World parks, I guess. Um, you are either buying or like genome sequencing uh, various or catching uh, various uh, dinosaurs. This takes place after one of the movies where all the dinosaurs are now like around the you know roaming in north america so um you actually work for like weirdly it's like the american like fish and wildlife uh <laughs> so crew weird. of like the cia are working with them to like set up these camps here and like different parts of alaska and nevada and stuff and capturing uh, dinosaurs and putting them in pens and then you're like you're setting up the science side of it and then you sort of set up the park side of it and get guests to come in to pay for everything uh, yeah. Wow. So it's a, it's a, it's a it's an interesting take on the management stuff, and they have lots of different like weird modes in it. Like some of them are like you straight up can play like the you know what happens if Jurassic Park from the first movie wasn't a total fucking catastrophe, and you can kind of do some of that. There's challenge modes. There's a sandbox mode. Um, it's good fun. I'm sort of Jurassic Park along with it. doesn't work unless things go crazy and haywire. So that's the thing. It kind of it kind of operates like games like you know prison architect right where the the idea is that eventually something's going to happen mm. that's going to like screw you so you know a storm comes in and it knocks down a bunch oh, of sure. fences suddenly you've got velociraptors uh going around suddenly <laughs> the, the the way to like capture them and stuff is interesting because you can actually take control of like the rangers that go out to like um like you know check on the dinosaurs or the helicopter that you use to like shoot them with sedative like you do that yourself <laughs> okay um, you, you, you can choose not to as well i believe um uh so it's interesting because like those sort of like high stakes moments where suddenly there's like a triceratops crashing through all your guests you can like be the helicopter who's like trying to put them down and then like transporting them and getting someone else to fix the fence and then putting them all back in um but there's loads of other threats like disease runs through the population um there's very interesting traits because you're doing like you're basically doing like genome sequencing and stuff. You end up like creating a bunch of raptors, but like oh, unfortunately, like this egg with wings, it's, it's going to it's, <laughs> I can fly unfor- now. Unfortunately, not that crazy, but it's like uh, oh, this one's like uh, only it's nocturnal, so it's like it's not it's going to be asleep all day so no one's going to actually look at it or this one's like hyper aggressive you can get like one raptor who ends up like ruining your pen because they keep getting in fights with the other ones and so so depressed and just fucking bringing everybody (laughs) else down (laughs) jesus so it's uh it's it's interesting it's like there's there's a lot of different like um aspects to it that are that are sort of you know lots of different plates to spin as you get in these types of games the management side of it's a little bit like the park side of it isn't really very deep like you can do some very basic tweaking to like concession stands and stuff but you can't like up the tickets of prices or price of tickets oh, or okay do so it's, like it's not like down to that you're like these fries need more salt or you know or anything. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. unfortunately it's uh it's a bit more hands-off than that um yeah. but, but it's uh yeah it's neat it's if nothing else within like the management space it's it's a very i've never played anything quite like this it's a very unique blend of the sort of like zoo and uh, parks management style stuff that's cool it's this seems like a, a good i mean other than the part where the idea of setting up a jurassic park is inherently ridiculous and <laughs> wrong and and like just asking for it like this seems like a good realization of that license it just feels like jurassic park in games like there's so many remember like warpath the fucking mm-hmm. playstation one fighting game oh, and just Hell like there's yeah. just trespasser obviously there's just like a long list of like fucked up jurassic park games uh yeah and... that first genesis one was good remember that, that was yeah. i remember that yeah, yeah. yeah. that game's not bad that game's not bad um, it's tough but it was good 
Yeah, this, this feels like, like an just... elegant, like, you know, it, it makes sense, right? Of course, park management. It's one of those ideas where like, oh yeah, of course. Like, that's the way to do that game. And, yeah. and, and the idea that you're doing something knowing that stuff is going to go wrong and you're mitigating against it. Like, it's not like every time the dinosaurs get out, it's like the worst thing that ever happened that everyone dies. You know, the funny, it's like, it's self-serious, but like the funny thing being that like dinosaurs get out, eat people, but then people keep coming back to your park. You, ever, you kind of have to build it. confidence they a little bit, it. but but it's like, it's, it's, it's like not too pulpy. It's not too you know, ridiculous or like vibing. It vibes off the movies just enough where it's like in the universe, like Jeff Goldblum and Bryce Dallas Howard's voices are in it. Oh. They couldn't get Chris Pratt. He's he, he's doing everything in an Italian accent now. So obviously they, <laughs> his voice work. is just, yeah, mm. his voice box. It's too sought <laughs> off there. Yeah. It's yeah. so like yeah. Chris Pratt, not Brash. Chris Pratt is, the, the, I get confused with my. That's Chris's. his hot dog venture. Yeah. That's his <laughs> video game journalism venture. <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> <laughs> um is that on is that on ps5 as well as ps4 pc, PC uh, i think yeah pc yeah yeah, yeah. runs yeah. a lot better on ps5 my wife's playing the ps4 version uh and you can frame rate is obviously not so good mm. it's been crashing a bunch for her too it's been buttery as hell on the ps5 for me oh, i'm bummer. sure the pc version is probably good too let your wife see the good version from time to time. Come on. I man. know. I'm, I'm the asshole. She's upstairs playing that. Like she's got like five times more errors than me as well. So yeah, maybe we'll monster. Mm. Um, speaking of monsters, Jan, <sighs> super auto pets. When I first saw this, I was like, <laughs> oh, cool. There's an idle game, but with Pokemon, but, uh, but it seems like it's primarily because I, I, that's what the auto took me as like, oh, great. Another idle game for me to look at. Right. And, then, and then I looked at it and I was like, oh, no, that's that's not that's it. not it. OK, what the, so what the hell is it? You know, this is a very like a lot of games have come out. Right. And like, I, yeah, I have I a mean, lot of the pile and two. There's been a lot. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like this, like within the past couple weeks and months, like I haven't finished Psychonauts 2. I think I'm right at the end of Tales of Arise. Uh, I made the mistake of starting Ace Attorney Great Chronicles, whatever the heck it's called. Um, and uh, I, I can't will myself to keep playing Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Uh, but I think I picked this game up during thanksgiving and i've put over 40 hours into it Whoa. damn because super auto pets it's a free-to-play game uh it does have a uh five dollar upgrade path that you unlock more pets and then you only get put into uh matches with other people that have upgraded but what it is on its face is it is basically an auto chess ah uh, except there instead of playing with a chessboard, you're playing with like uh, just like one lane of pets, um, and the the pets just like an uh, in an auto chess, uh, like team fight tactics, uh, Dota Underlords. Um, you upgrade your pets as you buy more of them. So if you buy three pets, at least in the first round, it's uh, three same pets. Like if you get uh, yo, you get three crickets, then you'll boost up. That cricket will be stronger. He'll, his ability will uh, uh, be stronger, and then as soon as you upgrade to a level one or a level two pet, you unlock the ability to unlock the next tier of pet that is above your current tier. Um, you have ten hearts, and as you lose and progress up the ladder, you're losing more and more hearts. Um, so if you lose the in the first round, you lose one. But as you progress to tier two, three, four, you're losing that many hearts as you're going along. Okay. Um, Stakes have been raised. Something that this game does better, in my opinion, than in auto chess or other auto chesses uh, is it is so much easier to figure out what to sell and buy. Um, because in an auto chess, specifically like Dota Underlords, I would sit on units for way too long um, because either I would not roll for the, the newer hot ones that you want, or I just couldn't see an immediate benefit. Um, the fucking weird types of strategy and synergies you see even in the first couple rounds are borderline insane. You will roll up to some matches and someone will be rolling up with four ducks. And it's like, <laughs> what, what are they trying to do with four ducks? And the thing is, <laughs> none of them are boosted. 
they're just rolling with four ducks. So you know <laughs> that fucker over there, he's going to sell all those ducks. He's going to try and get like a beaver. He's going to try and get like uh, uh, the Who fish keeps going. Some beaver yep. as a okay. pet. It's so wild. It is so wild. The different levels of synergy, um, and and there's different paths you can immediately jump down and and to figure out your build order as soon as like turn two right like turn two if you're able to upgrade one of your uh, level one pets to level to level two and then you unlock the next tier of pets you can see uh like if they give you a kangaroo you're you're like okay cool 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 <laughs> you prove that you can take care of this beaver you can have a kangaroo <laughs> yeah, later now get uh, level up these kangaroos <laughs> yo but then oh, you get the kangaroo you put that behind the dog and as you keep uh, summoning more pets because then once you get to like t like turn 10 and you're rolling with a dog the kangaroo you unlock the fly but then you also get a tier 2 turkey a fly yes uh, a tier 2 turkey a tier 2 turkey yo because oh, okay the f what's the These sushi about oh the sushi the sushi ga gives like buffs to your um your team where to to three of them randomly and then okay here's a fucked up thing there is an I, I, item in the game called a sleeping pill but really it's just like a it, it just kills your pet and i was like i don't want to kill any uh, of my pets the long but, sleep but mm -hmm. then but then i i figured it out as soon there's some abilities that get triggered as soon as a pet faints so you see me immediately trying to find a flamingo Giving that bad boy a pill just so the boys behind him can get level up. It's so mm -hmm. bad. Someone please take this game away from me. I'm spending too much time playing Super Auto Pets. Killing flamingos. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yo, because, oh, man. Oh, man. I, yo, I, okay, okay, okay. Last thing I swear. Last thing I swear. I rolled up because I had double monkeys in the back. And then. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> The monkeys, the monkeys give health and uh, 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 hit uh, hit points and attack points to uh, the furthest right unit. So I had a, an ox with a melon, Ooh. and yeah, <laughs> yep. And then an ox with a melon, he can tank that first hit, and that bad boy, his his HP was up to like fifty, and then I had three crabs Damn. behind it after I sold the double monkeys. So mm. then those crabs were like taking health off of each other. So we had an ox up front with 50, the crabs with 50, 50, 50, still the monkey in the back. That was useless though, because 50s, I'm going to stop talking. It's super auto pets. It's free to that play. That's amazing. It's on Steam. It's on Android. I almost thought about buying a fucking Android phone <laughs> just so I could keep <laughs> playing this game. Wow. Um, Your auto pets phone. Yeah. But like, you know, for what it's worth, I've sunk in 40 plus hours into this stupid game and i've not spent like a, rise i've not i haven't spent a dime oh so you, you haven't <laughs> spent the five dollars to upgrade to wow the... no because then i don't want to learn the meadow like using ladybugs yeah. and like the baby chicks and then the puppy i can barely oh, wrap yeah, my yeah. mind around using the dragon and the tiger <sighs> right yeah, yeah. And then is this, I mean, is, the, is there like a visible upgrade path for this for them? Like, are they adding more? Is there like, yo, man, we got a walrus coming next week. Back the fuck up. <laughs> oh, they have a, oh, no, it's not a walrus. It's a seal. Um, okay. They, it's, it's still the technically. Manatees in, in this motherfucker in season two. <laughs> it's still technically in beta. Um, okay. But the developers have been super transparent about like, hey, here's a roadmap. We're actively working on balance changes. We figured out that the Dodo rooster combo was fucking broken, so don't trip y'all. I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. Um, yeah. But no, oh, it's, okay. Last, last, last thing. I swear. I swear. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. A shortcoming that I don't like with TF uh, Team Fight Tactics other auto chesses is the prep phase is so short. It's generally like 30 seconds that you're kind of scrambling of like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Who do I upgrade? Do I keep trying to roll? What items do I buy? Here, the the battles take uh, happen with any and everyone. So you have your prep phase for as long as you want. You can just sit on it for however long. And then when you're ready to battle, after you've made your decisions, you just match up with some random. Um, so hmm. you're not ever... Most of the time, you're not ever having a match with the same person ever, uh, which also adds to the the strategy of like, okay, well, I got to be ready for whatever uh, I got coming for me because in an auto chess or a TFT, it's really, um, it's really boring, I guess, because you can formulaic, see, formulaic, of. sure, because you see 
the other teams or the, your other opponents and what they're building. So you kind of mm -hmm. get stuck trying to counter them versus here, since it's just whoever, you can roll with whatever combo you got. Um, and also the matches happen super quick. And it's it's one of those terrible things where it's like, well, that only took like two, three minutes. So I guess I can pop open another one. And then 30 hours goes by and then you forget that it was Thanksgiving. That sounds <laughs> great. Sounds like a great way to forget that it was Thanksgiving. <laughs> please come out. Please come out on the iPhone. I need. I, I actually don't come out on the iPhone. I don't do. Yeah, that. it sounds like <laughs> you'd be better off if it did not. Yeah. 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 Well, you could always get into Rocket League Sideswipe. I think that came out today. Damn, that Ooh. looks cool as hell. It is at least what side view. It's uh, it's the it's Rocket League for mobile. It, uh, oh. It's been in various soft launches for a little bit. I think that finally hit. It finally hit wide today on iOS. Anyway. And it's like a side view Rocket League. It's like a 2D looking view of it. I, I downloaded it. I haven't checked it out yet, but it looks it looks kind of fucking cool. Um, so, you know. Oh, yeah. It, that's crazy. It looks great. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Huh. All right. Yeah. Kind of, a, kind of a wild, kind of a wild take on that whole oh, thing. Oh, uh, uh, something that, yeah. uh, real quick. It's uh, mobile also. I realized I had like a, a trial to Apple Arcade still. Yeah, I busted open Fantasian, which is yeah. Um, I've had that installed forever and, and played a little bit of it and was like, I should get to this later, and then kind of just never did. But um, what do you think? It's it's super pretty. Uh, you know, yeah. they made a big deal about like how they physically made dioramas and imported them into the game. Yeah. Um, the random the way to skip random encounters in that game, I forget what it's called, um, is so funny because in like a regular JRPG, you're running around. Random counter, random encounter. Um, here, <clears throat> you have the ability or the choice to bank them all until the very end of like a screen or like a chapter. And That's then funny. I was thinking, like, what's going to happen there? And then literally all those enemies pop up to fight. <laughs> oh, and, wow. They like appear. Yeah, it's Damn. like a whole army. It's like, hey, you didn't want to fight this slime adjacent looking thing. Now there's 10 of them. <laughs> um, and it, it's really sure. neat. Uh, it's, it's really fucking pretty. I kind of wish it came out. Uh, somewhere else besides mobile, so mm -hmm. more folks could uh, check it out. But if you got Apple Arcade or a trial, yeah, check it out. Yeah, I, I you, meant to... forgetting to cancel your current. <laughs> oh Apple yeah, Arcade. yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, yeah. That's that's where I'm at. I think. Um, and also where I'm at is playing a lot of Halo. Uh, yes. Hey. But we will just talk about the multiplayer today. Um, uh -huh. I. Uh, I am still having a fantastic time with Halo. There's been a lot of, uh, like, I feel like there's just been a lot of fervor and anger and a lot of stuff happening around Halo that's really fascinating because it's like this, obviously it's this, you know, 20-year-old franchise that people are used to consuming a, a, a certain way with a certain number of maps and modes and all this other stuff, and then you've got this way more modern season-based take on it free to play take on it and people are losing their minds uh in ways that don't sometimes don't seem reasonable to me uh and at the same time the progression is in the xp and all that other stuff is broken they've made yeah. a couple of changes now including one that rolled out this morning but it's just mm -hmm. not not where it needs to be um but they ran their first event which was fiesta which is like hey you it's like it's team deathmatch with random weapons on every spawn which awesome. has been a really awesome way to just like fuck around with the different equipment and go like how does this yeah. like repulsor thing work and and wow if i get the grappling hook and a sword it's a lot of fun <laughs> um yeah and and stuff like that i yeah i don't know i'm i'm still playing a, few, a handful of matches every night i got the I got the armor out of the event, so for all all the complaints about the way the events are structured and how the 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 stuff was built, I I did manage to get to where I wanted to get to. Yeah, they uh, came pretty over quick, the course yeah. of the event. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, Jason, you've been playing some of it. What do you think? Yeah, they're still in love with it. Um, you know, that's the first night that it came out. We had a team of like twelve people in a Xbox party chat just fucking going nuts and uh it's been yeah very solid since um i'm of course you know i i would love to see more changes done to the progression 
Uh, I really need those numbers to go up to keep me invested, I guess. <laughs> uh, otherwise, yeah. you know, when, when I'm playing like match after match and not getting anything, uh, that's that's kind of a bummer, you know, when, when the rest of the game is just that good. Um, and they've, yeah, like you said, they've made a couple tweaks. Uh, I'm anxious to check out the one that they rolled out today where you get like 300 XP for your first match, uh, 200 for the second, 200, 200 for the third. Yeah. And then you know 100 for each subsequent one up to like a thousand points or something like that um that'll help a lot because that's usually about how much i play is you know uh five six matches and then mm. i get to tap out but um so yeah that's gonna help a, a ton but they said that they're yeah they're gonna do more i want to see what's up yeah keep i think me, that they probably going. they had to have known rolling this out that that's not the thing because the the way this you know there's no penalty for quitting a match and so you have people that are just like well i need yeah. five kills with this gun i'm gonna get in here get them and bounce or i you know uh there's just a lot of stuff like that that inspires people to play poorly and you know i think it's kind of a it is in some ways a classic halo thing but i have found mm -hmm. that no one's playing the objective matches as properly and i don't necessarily <laughs> want to play the objective matches at all uh oddball's fun um but they don't have just a regular ass team slayer playlist right now um mm -hmm. and and so you end up getting into a ctf match and when i get into a ctf match i quit it because i don't want to play ctf and so that's a bad experience for the other players who then have to like yeah. go in with a bot and hope another human joins in Aww. um like there's just a lot of stuff like that that um they seem like they are well aware of it uh if they weren't pre-launch then, then I'm sure that they have plenty of data now that says like, okay, these are the problems with progression. These are the problems with like the way they've built that progression and how it's inspiring people to not play the game uh, right. in the most team friendly way possible. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I don't know. They rolled out that change, and then I think the they said like, hey, we know that there needs to be a lot more here, but these are the quick fixes we can do, and the rest of it will have to be built. Um. I think for me, it's like a maps and modes thing too. Um, so that, like, that's the balance, right? Is like, you're used to Halo coming out as this full suite of just like, here are these maps and here's all the modes and here's all this stuff. But between it being a beta and it now being a game that's gonna, you know, probably have a much longer lifespan than Halo multiplayer ever has had before it. Like now they are like, okay, for the next season, we've got more maps. For next season, we've got more maps. We're going to do new modes here. We're going to do new cosmetics here. And so the idea of it con continually growing, uh, it seems like something that will, you know, it will obviously get there. But right now, I am starting to get a little tired of some of the maps, especially since, you know, they had two rounds, three rounds of betas and stuff. So a couple of those maps you maybe have seen a lot of <laughs> at this point. And... Uh, yeah, I think I think that's going to be something of a challenge for them going forward because then they also extended season one all the way out to May. Oh and wow! So, really? Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So um, the, the you start to wonder, like, okay, like, do people start to maybe um, fizzle out on it a little bit if it doesn't have mm. significant new gameplay content uh, to go with the new cosmetics and and all that other stuff? Um, even just like curious unlocking, to see how they handle it. like some of those like like a part of this makes me wonder that like the only way that th th if they if they opened up with like the full house if you had like loads of uh choices to make in terms of the gameplay modes yeah. out of the maps they, they can't reverse that but at least from this right. way they could open it right so especially if there's like that many players coming to it with the whole you know the free to play sort of aspect of it like maybe it behooves them to at least for a little while get people playing modes that they might not necessarily w go play right away or like i can see how in the progression just to play devil's advocate like i was doing stuff like using certain weapons that i had no interest in using because of the um the dailies and the weeklies that they had um, yeah so while i am totally with you that like the, the progression is way too slow like you both said and some of those things really do f cause people to play the game not in the spirit that that game mode is intended um at least the narrative of this for them and maybe from a from a qa perspective or from some sort of onboarding cr perspective maybe them opening up the gates a little bit now every couple of weeks sort of makes 
create some like artificial newness in it. You know, if you're able yeah. to suddenly just only do CTF or only do Slay, Team Slayer or whatever, I wouldn't be surprised if they do it that way. Because yeah, they couldn't do it the other way. They couldn't just immediately start to like pool people. Everyone would go crazy. Yeah, and they've always been. I, I feel like over the years, when you think about Halo and and the the multiplayer hoppers and playlists and stuff that they build for it. Like they've, they've always been careful about which ones they surface for people and, and having those kind of come and go. The call of duty's definitely done quite a bit of that over the, the last handful of years as well. So that thing of like, Oh, we're going to do this limited time playlist. That's just this map or just small maps or just big maps or just this style of, you know, this mode or, or, or whatever. Um, I think it makes sense for them to kind of, continue to have very few places for people to go just to make sure that matchmaking is really snappy but yeah. they do have a ton of players right now so it's like you know you could probably get away with yeah uh, having more than, than more than they have right now but yeah you're you're right that i've i feel like i've between that fiesta playlist and some of the weekly challenges and stuff like that i have gone out of my way to use weapons that i don't know that well and i feel oh, good like i am slightly better at halo or at least i have a better understanding of it maybe not better from a gameplay perspective um, because I'm time the shits in all, most <laughs> matches. Um, but yeah, that but, Fiesta uh, one, right? Like, what a great yeah. Because not only does it get you to use a bunch of weapons that, like, I was scared shitless of half the weapons. I was like, I don't know what some of these do. Some mm -hmm. of them are new. Some of them are kind of new to me or ones that I haven't used in a long time. But also because yeah. everyone else was also maybe using weapons that they weren't used to, it it created like a safe space for me to fuck <laughs> around with those ones. You know, because if you if you go into like a big team battle and suddenly you pick up some weapon you know you're shit with and then they're all using the proper carbine or whatever and they're just yeah. nailing you down at least in this everyone was kind of like i don't know how to use this fucking thing either like <laughs> yeah so that yeah was, i, I was... think that's and i think it's, it's a great sign from them that like hey at its core halo can just be a light and fun thing that you can yep. enjoy yeah. like they launched with all these esports skins and all this other shit that obviously is a big part of competitive shooters these days but at this end, you know, it has rankings and placements and all this other stuff for people to want to do that. But to have their first event be like, here's a shit show. Go have a great time. <laughs> I think that that's smart, right? You know, if, if they just said like, oh, here's our and it seems like the, some information about the next events leaked and it seemed like they are tactical focused playlists, which are they, they've kind of had SWAT or different different tactical stuff in that they've used as names in, in previous games and stuff like that. So people are thinking like, like oh, maybe that'll be or something. Or, no, it's uh, well potentially but I, I don't think so i think it's just more like hey we're going to start you with the headshot friendly weapons and stuff like that the same way when you when you join a ranked game you start with the um you start with the you know you you can start with the scoped weapon and all the headshots and all that shit so um so maybe they'll go more in that direction for this one but i think like that's that's what I want out of a game and what I want out of its progression is I don't want them to continually to focus their game down this esports hole from which there is no escape, right? It's just like, okay, well, if you if you stopped getting serious at some point, if you were just like playing this for fun, this game's kind of no longer for you because the last eight months of updates have really honed this thing into the esports machine that we hope makes a lot of money. And I hope that Halo, I, I, I wish more games could strike a better balance between just like, hey, just fuck around. Just fuck around and have a good time. Um, and and that, the, the free-to-play yeah. thing has kind of fixed the... Because I, I, I'm i not mad on a lot of these big multiplayer games. I, you know, I loved Halo 3. I loved Gears of War. There were moments in time where I was really into it. And this is capturing that feeling. But one of the things I like about this that has created like a longer tail for me is unlike that Gears of War problem where you come back in two weeks later and suddenly if you don't know how to use a shotgun, you're, you're mincemeat. <laughs> because like yeah. there's this you know the free to play aspect of it or the fact that there's more access to it means that like there's lo like i feel like i'm actually pretty i'm half decent at this i'm in the middle of the games or i'm like getting yeah. to the top of certain games maybe it's because my rank is low as well i don't know but like there seems to be a good churn of like maybe less experienced players for me to like beat the shit out of and then every once in a while i'll come up against somebody <laughs> i come up against someone who like clearly knows how to play halo and they like dominate the entire match and the rest of us are just like passengers you know but yeah th it's kind of cool it reminds me of rocket league where like if, you, if i go back to rocket league having missed out on a couple of weeks and it resets my status like the first the first 50 games are a hoot <laughs> as you <laughs> try and get back in yeah yeah they, they, it needs yeah, it needs to have stuff like that. You're you're right. Like just greater access to a larger player base and stuff like that will will only help that game. Um, 
and yeah, it's been it's been interesting to see it all out there. And I, I just uh, I am very, I guess I I don't have I I am not going to say much more about my time with Halo, but I am I'm very interested to see how next week goes um, as the uh, the campaign gets already. out there and yeah uh, and, and more people start playing that. Uh, the one thing I'll say is that when I go into multiplayer matches, I just assume I have the grappling hook, and you don't. <laughs> And oh, uh, funny, no. <laughs> so funny. that's that's took that's takes some getting used to for sure. <laughs> um, but but yeah, no, when 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 that stuff kind of gets out there, um, and and people kind of get their hands on the campaign, I'm really interested. I, I said as much in, in the, the preview coverage that we did, it's just like you know, like it is a different, it, it is a very familiar, but at the same time, very different take on on Halo. Um, when you get to the kind of open-ish world and kind of see what that looks like it's, it's a it's a really interesting um really interesting changes so um we'll see how that goes uh jan oh yeah I, I understand you saw the resident evil movie i saw the first 10 <laughs> minutes of it uh, oh my god yeah. <laughs> 10 minutes i 10 have... minutes though is that no. enough Shit. i have not walked out of a movie <laughs> in years and i watch a lot of them um 10 minutes, ten I, minutes. I lasted what 10 happens? minutes 10 like <sighs> did it spit in your face uh, yeah like, did you have to poop is that part of it like no what? no i like i look my partner and i looked at each other like 10 minutes in 10, 10 or so minutes in we looked at each <laughs> other and it's like do you want to just leave and we just Let's left leave. <laughs> Something that means something so obscenely grotesque had to transpire in the first first ten minutes. So that's like, like, I you know I'm a I'm a tangential fan of Resident Evil. I like four and five. Mm -hmm. um, you like I, five? No, five? but all right. I like <laughs> right. I like playing through five with a friend. It was fun co-op. Yeah. Um, I I liked two Resident Evil two. Uh, I think I read the the novelization of Resident Evil Two also for some reason. Um, okay, the and, best way to experience it, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great scripts. Uh, yeah, I um I know that the original Resident Evil movies were hit or miss for a lot of people, um and this one, I uh, it's a giant miss for me. It what they attempted to do is to just cram everyone into this one movie Ooh. um and you know i i don't completely remember how leon s kennedy was introduced in the original resident evil 2 but i remember him being cool right he's a cool guy ish sure yeah, yeah. I mean, okay for a cop I, you Does know yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he, he had like cool hair and stuff at the time the leon s kennedy that they have here is just portrayed as a, an absolute dumbass that everyone is dunking on all the time um Weird. that's okay like, yeah that's sure uh chris and um Cl claire are like raised up in an orphanage with like a, a, a wild doctor and then there's this creepy or like this there's this person that is constantly like watching claire i guess that maybe is a figment of her imagination, maybe not. And I don't know. It just like it just felt weird. Like it didn't feel it. It didn't particularly feel like a low budget movie, but just something about the tone of it. I don't know. I feel like horror movies have progressed so far that whatever this was trying to do wasn't great at all. I don't know. And just after a while, like they had the whole thing of like, there's a creepy child looking out the window, and then the creepy kid's mom is also creepy. But then in my head, I'm like, Yo, Claire, you're sneaking into someone's house. This I would be staring That's at you too. Yeah. And also, they were just like shoehorning like every little Resident Evil uh, reference they could. Like Jill Valentine pops up, and then she eats a sandwich. And was like, <laughs> hey. uh -huh, This is a Jill oh, sandwich no. now. She is oh, not. No. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. And they they throw in this a Wesker in the first ten minutes. Yes, That's this crazy. all happens in the first ten minutes. They like there's like a Wesker that pops up, and then like I I don't mean to stick up for truck drivers of America, but I'm very tired of the trope that truck drivers are like slobs because the guy they got in the beginning of this 
he's like uh he, he's just like a, a rude crude dude that just puts his double cheeseburger on the dash and he's like munching at it and saying some misogynistic things truck drivers have advanced people yeah they really have get you a, know a, i mean yeah you uh, gotta pick your battles in this one though jan i what, guess what, what's happening i don't know it just like it just felt all over the place and it, i don't know if they're trying to set up for a franchise but it's just really odd that they try and go for everything all at once. I mean, it's already it's been a franchise, right? I mean, this the well, thing, this right? is like they've, they've it's this is a new. reboot. It's a okay. reboot. Yeah, and I, yeah. I feel like this uh, has tried to emulate the look of the games more than the Jovovich Resident Evils. Is that correct? Um, the, the Paul W S Anderson ones. Yeah, I can't. I, yeah. I mean, I only saw ten minutes, so I can't speak. To Donald Logue but... is in this. Did you get to him? All right, we're going. Um, wait, do you, you say, wait, wait. Do you do you guys say Donald? Donald. Do you all say Donald? Do is Donald? it Donald Logue? Donald. Donald. Is it Donald? It's, the, yeah. it's my yeah. fucking wow. name in Irish. It's Donald is my name. Donald O'Dwyer. It's Irish for Daniel. But if people say okay. Donald, I'm gonna lose my. Yeah. Well, he I feel be like he was in What We Do in the Shadows and pronounced it like that. Donald? Did he really? He did. He I, did appear in that show. He's like the I joke. Know. It's like he's a he's canary in the coal mine for like a bad movie, but also Neil McDonough's in this as well, who's like <laughs> serial video game movie. He was M. Bison in that Street Fighter thing, right? Oh, oh God. that's the role oh, of the... Julia. What? Yeah. Not, my, not my Bison. No, not in that yeah. one. In the, the no. one that came out like six years ago. Like the Chun Li one, was it? Was there a Chun Li oh. Street Fighter? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh like Jesus. Jesus. Chris yeah. 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 Dark Path. That was yeah. 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 terrible. Love yeah. pull, pull up. So Pull did you get up. your money back, or well, did you just like, eat it? My partner and I, we have like a, a movie pass thing at our, our theater, so oh, okay. we it was free, um, and we just did. Did you pivot into like another theater, or we since like we couldn't request a refund or whatever, we couldn't get tickets for that Go, oh, gotcha. time space. Um, gotcha, um, gotcha. God, you didn't, but you didn't just shimmy into another. I I can't. Like, I hate shimmy. Like you again. do. I hate like you either. do. Yeah. No, okay. Did yeah, you have popcorn? Fair. Like, did you go home with popcorn? Like a big bag of popcorn? We bought. We got free popcorn that day too, because we nice. go to the movies too much. And then I just ate my popcorn on the drive home. Just sad cool. and upset. Yeah, cool. At least you got popcorn. That's living right there. I yeah. don't know. It just it's such a bummer because like it, I don't know video game movie adaptations so all over the place. Yeah, but I, and, I feel and like... horror movie the horror movie genre has just progressed leaps and bounds from whatever this was trying to do and again only 10 minutes in i'll i'll bite the bullet if it winds up becoming super great but, yeah, but i don't think so part of the story is that you have movie pass or whatever the hell it is so like your attachment to your investment is much weaker yeah. sure we so, see the same thing with Game Pass, you know. That's uh, exactly like yeah. if you paid good, uh, hard-earned, full-value money for this movie, perhaps you would have made it fifteen minutes, perhaps or twenty, perhaps or the whole sunk, thing. Sunk cost fallacy might get you through the entire movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I will say there Got when we walked <laughs> when we walked into the theater, <laughs> there was this dude sitting smack dab in the middle. He yeah. was su he looked super he jazzed. Ready. I think Costa he had. Genesis. I think he yeah. had a Resident Evil shirt, and then yeah, like, uh, because there weren't that many people in the theater, I was occasionally like looking over, seeing a glance at that dude, and his his giant smile as the movie started progressively faded. So I, I wonder. I, I so hope he, the life right out of him. I, I hope that guy enjoyed his time. I want to read the there. forum he posted on <laughs> at the end. I yeah. want to read his post so bad. Uh, the, the, some like the Resident Evil Tomatoes. fan forum that like they love the lore of it. There's like yeah, yeah okay. Well, I'd rather uh, audience yeah. score is way higher than the <laughs> critics one right now, so they <laughs> might they might be actually loving it. Uh, I can't believe that he said itchy tasty. This was the best movie I've ever yeah. seen. I um, think they do say that in the first ten oh, minutes. No. I think of course they say man, they really went for went for it all in those first ten minutes. Does yeah, it take place really... in the mansion at the stars or? The, the, uh, it's in Raccoon City. They say, and they're so is it positioning Raccoon right. City as like a dilapidated town. But they mentioned the mansion. They're like, oh, don't okay. go there. Okay. Well, well, it's sitting pretty at twenty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Joseph. Oh. 
Oh, well, you know, fantastic. That sounds great. Well, I'm going to um, go get tickets to that uh, mm-hmm. during the break here. Why don't we uh, reconvene in a little bit? And we'll talk about a little bit of news. How about it? I'd love it. Cool. Great. Sometimes you are too busy to prepare food. Heck, sometimes you're too busy to go out and acquire food on your own. That's where Grubhub comes in. Grubhub, they serve restaurants. And by that, they mean they serve restaurants to you, but also they serve restaurants to make sure the restaurants aren't getting treated unfairly or treated poorly and all that other stuff. You know, restaurants, they're, they're working hard to serve customers. So Grubhub works hard to serve them. Grab it was hard to serve all those restaurants, right? I mean, there's a whole thing there. It's They are bringing food to your house. That's convenience right there. That's convenience. They'll bring it right to your door. Leave it right there. Deliver the finest restaurants in your city or town. Uh, big and small, national brands, local places, all that sort of stuff. They'll just bring it right to your house. And today, Grubhub is doing something a little extra to serve Panera. You can get a free delivery perk on your first order from Panera of $15 or more. Order through the Grubhub app or online. Grubhub, we serve restaurants. Y'all quipping yet? You doing some quipping? No? You're not quipping? Uh, Hey, look, there's never been a better time to brush your teeth. I mean it. Right now, you could be brushing your teeth. And why not brush them extremely well? Why not go over the top with hardcore power? The Quip Electric Toothbrush is loved by over 7 million mouths. And what does it do? It's got timed sonic vibrations, so it gives you 30 second pulses. So you just, you're in your mouth there for two minutes, 30 seconds per quadrant, you know, with the toothbrush. It lets you know like, hey, you're done with this side, move on to the other side. So, you know, you're not getting lost in the mirror brushing for 10 minutes, but also you're not like brushing them for 10 seconds going like, all right, good to go. No, two minutes. That's the dentist recommended time to get those teeth clean. The brush itself, it's lightweight. It's got a sleek design. It's wireless. Uh, The charger is not bulky, so you can travel with it easily. It's got a travel cover that doubles as a mirror mount for less clutter, which is nice. Reusable handles in a range of sleek metal hues, including best-selling all black and all pink, as well as bright plastic colors that are sure to make a pop in your bathroom counter. And hey, why not earn some rewards while you're brushing your teeth? What? That's right. If you upgrade your Quip to a new smart motor, you can track and improve your brushing with the free Quip app, and you can earn amazing rewards like free refills, products, Target gift cards, and more. Quip has a whole line of stuff. The toothbrush, that's the centerpiece, right? But look, hey, flossing. Everyone loves to floss. I'm flossing right now, some would say. They got floss string that expands to clean. They got a reusable floss pick. Uh, They got a refillable gum that's sugar-free with a long-lasting mint flavor and a refillable mouthwash that's four times concentrated, so it's good for you and the planet. They'll deliver all that stuff to your house every three months from $5. Shipping is free, so you can save money, skip all the hassle of going. Sometimes you go and they're like, some of this stuff is like locked up and you get like like the razor, like the razor blades are. Some, some of this tooth stuff is locked up now. You know, like, like flag somebody down and be like, hey, can you open this? I need to get a new mouth thing. And like, that's impossible. Forget it. Get it shipped to your door. Quip is running their best deals of the year right now, which means you won't be paying through the teeth when you gift better oral health this year. If you go to getquip.com slash bombcast right now, on top of their holiday savings, you get your first refill for free. That's your first refill for free and up to 40% off bundles at getquip.com slash bombcast. That's spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash bombcast. Quip, the good habits company. And we're back with the news. How about it? Uh, Here are the headlines. We're in a weird lull here where because the short week of Thanksgiving last week and uh, and the game awards next next week, next week. Yeah, next um, week. 
Keely's there's dreams. not a lot happening right this <laughs> moment. Um, Keely's dream. Yes. Uh, he's writing dreams. it down. He's writing it down. Oh, it's a it's yeah, a great thanks. it's a great album. It's not a good album, but it's a great album. Uh, Somebody needs to Photoshop his face onto that album cover with the low rider. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> the original baby yeah. you have. Uh, It'd be nice if our community made the most amount of Keely memes. That'd be okay. Yeah, I would buy. Um, that might be the NFT I buy. That might that might be it. I might <laughs> that be the one crossover to the dark. You're like, all right, edition. burn the world. I just need to own this fucking receipt for this JPEG. Exactly. Um, Keely Dream oh, yeah. 04. It's yeah, mine I, forever. I would be happy to right click and save your NFT and steal it from you. Um, <laughs> and, claim, and claim your power along the way. Uh, CD Projekt Red. Uh, had their earnings call as these public companies do. I forgot that all that happened, but uh, yeah. So they are there's some good and bad here. Uh, the they tightened up the window for the uh, upcoming releases of Cyberpunk 2077, the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions. They say that they are on track for Q1, and uh, that they are ramping up a team with expansion on on the expansion for. Uh, for that game. So I guess they feel like they've gotten it to a place where it functions as intended and uh, and are going <laughs> to get back to work on expanding it. Um, let's see here. Uh, the, the Witcher is also going to get a similar update between April and June of next year where it will, uh, let's see here, uh, according to this Polygon story, visual upgrades and new items inspired by the Netflix series based on the Witcher books. That's a weird... Hmm loop of like okay so the games are based on the books but then this is based on the netflix series which is not based on the game because it too is based on the books but we're going to put the items from that thing into this thing because it's all technically the same thing what uh, if they put in a henry cavill skin what if yeah I mean, they're just gonna put that song in it right Mm -hmm. yeah is that, probably is that the only thing from the witcher series that stuck That's around was like the only thing like, that i can think of yeah um so yeah uh they're looking to add multiplayer to its franchises which they've uh, you know they've more or less said as much in the past but they haven't really um, what are you doing yeah. a multiplayer witcher are you it's just like thousands of little geralts running around or what, what if there fuck? were two witchers <laughs> holy shit witchers that's four swords it's, or it's what if four swords but with only two players oh actually yeah. it's, it's a better there idea than i was um, thinking yeah uh Let's see. Uh, they have not said which, uh, you know, because like the cyberpunk multiplayer thing was the kind of the, the stuff they were talking about the most. And then when cyberpunk uh, burned to the ground, they were like, ah, we're not going to talk about that anymore. So they haven't really committed to which franchise will get multiplayer first and all the other <laughs> stuff. Um, but they do want to put it in cyberpunk as well as Witcher. whether that's putting it into the game itself or a separate product, I, I think is probably uh I bet that's that has been on the table at some point. Um, I think it was originally a separate mode that they then yeah. shelved sometime in last year, might be oh dear before right. was it? Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. sorry. Was this supposed to be like co op campaign or like competitive multiplayer? I, I think there was no details about it. as far as I remember, there was no details about it, but it was going to be a separate mode that came out oh. after the launch of the main game. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But then, and then when... got put on hold. Right. So now they're they're kind of like turning those switches back on, like, hey, we've kind of gotten things a little bit back on track here so let's let's get back into the things we pl had planned to do nine apologies uh, ago um gog good old games uh is losing some money and uh well okay so they stopped calling it good old games uh as they got away from oh. focusing it on good old games old like it was originally uh yeah here's a storefront for drm free versions of old games often packaged up in DOS box and they do the work to make sure that that's all configured properly as well as their own games. And uh, the quote they've given here as, as GOG has expanded to kind of try to be more of a, uh, a storefront, um, they're backing off of that. First and foremost, we've decided that GOG should focus more on its core business activity, which means offering a hand-picked selection of games with its unique DRM-free philosophy. In line with this approach, there will be changes in the team's structure. So... GOG has been, have you, has anyone messed with the GOG Galaxy client? Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. It's slick. It's neat. I like it a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, it yeah. did not inspire me to shop at GOG and I <laughs> it turned off the, like, mm -hmm. don't show me the GOG store. I think the only thing I own there 
of note is cyberpunk because when they sent that yeah. out for review they sent gog codes um and uh but it, the the idea if you haven't seen it is that you log into a lot of different services they have official integrations as well as third-party integrations that just like live on github that they use to like scrape your psn profile mm -hmm. and friends list and all this other stuff to pull in whatever data they can to provide this kind of unified client obviously you're not going to launch your playstation games from this pc desktop client but it shows everything you own how much you've played it it kind of unifies it is in a lot of ways what the giant bomb achievement tracking mm -hmm. that we were doing Ooh. 10 years ago um was kind of originally meant to be it was that idea of like hey a lot of these games are on multiple platforms but have the same achievements and trophies across steam and psn and xbox but if you want to see you know if you have friends that are playing on a different platform we want to be able to show you how far they have progressed and show it able to have a feed like that like it, it's it's a neat uh it's neat uh the god galaxy stuff but Gog's losing money, and I have to imagine that that Galaxy client is maybe not going to see uh, a ton of, of updates past that. I don't even know if it ever technically left beta. It was one of those things that mm. they were always yeah, I wonder. Like, testing, testing. Um, but they, you, anyone could get into it. As a result of all this, um, the stock price is down about 8.5%, um, with <laughs> Bloomberg Canada saying that analysts see even more downside for the studio. Um, you know, they, they've had to... Put the put cyberpunk on sale to try to you know get some get some brand affinity back for it uh, maybe a little bit earlier than they anticipated and some other stuff so you know they're kind of feeling the effects of of that oh it's a, a massive reputation hit which i feel hmm. is fairly justified here considering uh the the path that that game has been on um and so that will that will change uh yeah that's 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 probably why you're seeing some of these gog changes and some of this other stuff because there's a, a bit of just like okay we've got a we are now a public company and we've got to write this ship um the gog stuff is really interesting we did a a doc on it a couple of years back and seeing just the amount of people they had and what they were doing mm -hmm. like yeah. huge amount of biz dev people lots of like going out and finding like try, trying to like do all the legal work, the like rat's nests of, of legal problems they have with certain games um, to like try and get them on the system. I mean, they're not the only people doing this, but like they were, and they've sort of done a lot of them. Like I also feel like I wonder at a certain stage, is there like a, a smaller pool of ones to get? Like there'll always be the no one lives forevers. And like, there's a couple of games out there that are just wrapped up in insane, uh, you know, licensing or rights issues that people just can't seem to, to untangle i know um uh the night dive as well the system yeah. shock remake folks uh, up in up in portland they, they've done a bunch of that stuff as well um but i wonder if there's just less of that maybe around uh, you know the yeah ones have been you, gotten. You, yeah they've either, either been gotten or you have studios that whoever does own the rights they're like okay well we want to do a, a remake of this we want to try to sell this for you know like stubs the zombie came out on modern consoles this year like it what I'm like sure of course like but um, so, you know, everyone, everyone is trying to monetize their back catalog in, in different ways, which probably leaves a lot less for, for GOG to kind of pick up and, and handle. You're right. That, that probably has to be, has to be part of this. Um, and then, you know, Epic is, you know, like they're, the, the Epic came along and launched their own store as good old games was going through this transition too. So it's like even more competition there. You've got Game Pass on PC, which, you know, not that any one of those is seemingly making a huge dent in steam's fortunes like they broke their concurrent user records like twice over the thanksgiving break so steam is doing fine um but you know for a store front that was always trying to deliberately be the little guy it's probably a lot harder to be the little guy when you've got uh three or more companies trying to be bigger guys uh out there Fortnite, remember that game? It used to be a used to be an iOS, used to be a phone game. Ah, uh, the Naruto game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the one. Uh, yeah, uh, it's over. Oh. December fourth. Oh. Yes, oh. Unreal Tournament I, coming back. Let's go. That's yes. right. Just, good run. I just bought that yeah. skin. Yeah. Now, well, uh, get it in uh, for over the next handful of days here because Chapter Two will end on December fourth. They have an in-game event uh, called the End. Um. You know, this being chapter two, they did this with chapter one. I, that was, I think, was that the first truly big 
big, 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 big Fortnite moment of just like, oh my God, Fortnite's been offline for hours. Like that was before all the concerts and all the other stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Was, that, was that the big portal thing in the middle of the map? Was that all? Was it all that I think, thing? I think that, that was that. thing yeah. or something. Um, <laughs> no one here plays Fortnite. Fortnite experts <laughs> right. uh, weigh in on Fortnite Chapter Two. I think they did this before. Um, yeah, you build no houses, there. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You, yes, you. Yeah, the, the, uh, there's a storm, and then there's zombies, and then you have to stop the zombies from breaking your house. Tim oh, Blazinski, yeah. I think, designed this game, right? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the guy. Yeah, that yeah. guy. Yeah, and then dude, you can ride dude, BMX cool. bikes. It's radical. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, huge's Fortnite. Dude, huge. Um, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. Dude, huge. They should put awesome. the chainsaw gun into Fortnite. You can mow through people's fucking. And let people use it as a hybrid weapon and pickaxe. Mm. Put the f put the don't be a coward. Put the flak cannon in Fortnite. Sure, yeah. Put the flak cannon in Fortnite, but put the chainsaw gun in first. And I that's steal that idea from me. Like all the dances, um, <laughs> they're all yours. That's yeah. right. Those were all mine. That's yeah. Wow. I I invented all those dances. The Millie Rock. Last time they did this, they took the servers offline for hours. Uh, and like some of the stuff about what chapter two was going to be kind of leaked. And and so people were kind of tipped off to what was going to happen. Um, and I imagine that this just means like, hey, we're going to have a new map and some new lore to go along with why the map has changed. That seems like it makes sense. Like lore. they're probably due for freshening up. I mean, that yeah, yeah. Right. The, the lore around fucking Snake Eyes and Ryu fighting. I know. Um, is it is it uh, weird that I bought those two skins and have never really played the game? Those are the yeah. two that, that got me to like that think about reinstalling Fortnite. It was just like literally, yeah. literally those two. Just like yeah, Snake Eyes. I like Snake Same. Eyes. Um, the, Ryu, that guy. I know that guy. He loves to shoot guns. Um, <laughs> what if what if he announced Jeff Keighley skin at the Game Awards? Sure, let's do it. Sign me up. I'll reinstall Fortnite huh? for Jeff Keighley. I, don't know. I, I got Keighley skeevies now. Hmm. Keely skin um, is the way to skeevy. do it, really. Delicious. Um, Keely, Ariana Grande <laughs> together on a squad. Ooh, uh -huh. Now we're talking. Yeah. Now we're talking. Um, more Fortnite coming your way. But this is this is like part of the cadence of what these, you know, what the Battle Royale games uh, have, have kind of built. This is not that far off from like the Warzone style of stuff where like next week they're about to completely replace their map as well. I think they just go about it in, in different ways. Fortnite feels like, well, I, I think Warzone is going to have its own kind of end game event um, this week and next um, leading up to to the, the World War II map coming in or, or whatever. Um, but I don't know. Fortnite does big, so much bigger than uh, other games um, that when these things come along, I don't necessarily go re-download Fortnite to see <laughs> what happens uh, firsthand, but these are some YouTube videos I will catch up on later. I'm just like, what they, what they do? Because they, they just seem to come up with some cool, weird shit um, to, for a game Check that is world, ostensibly yeah. just like, yeah, just fucking, hey, just whatever, keep dropping. Um, do you think the Fortnite audience is is someone that would regularly check like a blog or like a specific vertical of a website enough? Or is it just so specifically on youtube or twitch or or just in fortnite or word of mouth you're asking the question that everyone is trying to solve in games media sure or, or, or maybe they have moved on from trying where to solve these it people yeah where are these people how do we reach those people how do we monetize these teens yeah like literally uh so I, I think the answer is like, you know, the big sites with uh, really good SEO already have probably made quite a lot of money over the years just writing Fortnite story after Fortnite story. But I don't think that that, that gravy train is the same as it used to be mm -hmm. uh, for, for whatever reason, whether they're getting it somewhere else or people just aren't necessarily looking for it the same way or what they are looking for is like when the weekly challenges pop up and they're just like how do i i gotta go collect items from around the map where are they just show me the same way like people have probably made a lot of money over the years literally just saying where is zur this week in destiny right and let me google where is zur and you end up on where the fuck is zur.net or you know whatever <laughs> nine different websites people created to tell you where the fucking destiny secret shop man is um like it's highly specific requests like that is what people want to know about Fortnite. Um, 
and then from there you've probably got your separate um gosh it's almost like i've been thinking about this a lot lately um you've got your separate like uh people that want to know about the esports side of the game specifically right. that might not care about those other aspects of the game and, and all that sort of stuff like no i don't care how big your team is no major outlet can can afford to hire enough people to cover all of those different um verticals so you know you could pick your shots and be like yeah let's do Fortnite because it's big and then move on to something else when Fortnite is less big or or something like that but sorry what were we talking about <laughs> you blacked out yeah Ariana Keely Grande skin. Keely skin yeah Jeff Keely skin yeah Keely's uh, yeah. Keely skin yeah would uh, you yeah, wear I mean, I, he, I'd probably freak him out if you call the podcast that he might actually like he might be a bit worried about that well, I mean, didn't he made it into Among Us earlier this year, right? Didn't they what? do a, a Jeff Keighley yeah. head for Mask. Among Us or yeah. something around they E3? Did. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. I tried That's to weird. get that, and I downloaded Among Us, and I couldn't figure out where to put in how to link up my stuff, and, and then I realized I don't, I don't want to play Among Us. I love um, Among Us' menu so much <laughs> because it's like you would never know that this game made millions and millions of dollars. It yeah. just looks like some action script nonsense. It's, I love it. Yeah, That's yep totally um i still more effective than the menus in battlefield 2042 um, oh which i think are a shit show anyway speaking of shit shows there are multiple battlefield 2042 patches planned this is one of those uh th this reminded me of cyberpunk in a big way where when cyberpunk went sideways you had those apologies that were like okay we've got a patch planned for this month and here's what's going to be in that and now I'm going to tell you about what's going to be in the patch after that. Like stuff they yes. already knew wasn't going to make it into the first patch. They're like, we're also working on this further out. Like, here's our Trello fucking shit for the next six months or, you know, whatever. They've got roadmaps for fucking patches. Yes. Yeah. That's, awesome. Uh, that's where we're at. Uh, they EA put out a, a long, uh, a long, I think on Steam, this had to be two parts, um, but a, a, a long ass post about... Uh, the future of the near term future of Battlefield in terms and, and then by that, I mean, bugs they are currently working on, not like here's hot new Fuck. maps and new operators and all this other stuff. It's been like, hey, yeah, you're right. Accuracy in weapons when you're moving does suck. We're going to uh, make some changes there. And hey, the game is CPU bound and we need to do some engine optimization. You're right. Mm. Yeah, that's that's not we where we agree like it's it's a lot of stuff like that like some of you have wondered about this well you're right you know like this is the problem and um and so it's just like they're they're talking about th three different patches two different patches i guess one came out over thanksgiving break that was a uh, that was update number two um and then on top of that they've they're talking a lot about what's in update number three and all this other stuff and it is just i am scrolling through it it is patch notes patch notes patch notes for patches that haven't even hit yet Fuck. Um, wow. And it's pretty wild. That's um, where we are now, huh? Okay. Yeah, I mean, this game just came out, and they already have, like, a huge list of things to fix. It, it, and it, some of it is, like, technical issues, and some of it is just straight-up, like, gameplay changes, which for a game that saw, already saw a light delay, um, like, this just seems like a lot, man. Mm. Uh, I mean, it, I guess it's unsurprising that this game, in, game came in, must have come in very hot, considering what it was like at ship um and that that kind of late delay but i don't know i also feel like with other stuff on the market and just the speed with which the game release schedule moves like even in it is when we're kind of slowing down for the holidays i don't know that i'm and i don't know that there's going to be much they can do to bring me back to battlefield like i had a a real high hope for this game before mm -hmm. it came out and then played a handful of matches. It was like, I, I don't even, even and in reading over this stuff, it's like, even if they fix this stuff, I'm not sure that this is the game for me. Um, I'm not sure that this is the battlefield for me. And I wonder, do you think that games, what, what do you think, Danny, you've spent a lot of time thinking about final fantasy 14 and the, and the, the turnaround that that game had. Do you think that that's something that can still happen? Like, is the bar even higher for something like that for for a game to 
be able to kind of undo uh, uh, some some bad vibes early on? Like, do you think Cyberpunk pulls it out in a way that is like gets them to the sales success that they hoped it would be? Do you think Battlefield turns it around in a way that makes the players stop fucking hating it so much? <laughs> I think I think that like the 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 outside of the sort of general arc of games that uh, you know go through these these good good guy bad guy sort of narratives online right and some of it's based in reality some of it's sort of perpetuated by various myths we have online outside of that i think battlefield has two specific problems when it comes to this one it's a military shooter and like there's nothing about this that feels evergreen it feels like another one of those annual releases so i think like Mm -hmm. six months from now it loses a lot of its muster and mystique and people are going to be thinking about like the next whatever it is call of duty or the next whatever and the other thing is the scale of these games like it's not like a game i mean final fantasy sure it's an mmo but like battlefield requires a certain amount of people to be online playing it at every moment and that if that's not there like that's why dropping the ball on this one is more costly for a game like battlefield than a lot of other types of games because the window for them to get that audience and manage to try and keep them like every time they're gonna and you're right like this 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 page is like it i feel i feel like sad reading the patch they're talking Mm -hmm. about because you can see the amount of work it is you can see it's like kind of all over the place and also that means that every time somebody at the team is working on this stuff they're not working on you know content that was supposed to be for the game for the continual like health of its community right so it's this one's a real like like the water is piling into the boat and i'm not sure if they have enough buckets to to scoop out scoop it all out by the time it's it matters anymore it's Mm -hmm. it's really it's like worst case scenario for a game like this because these games are like they still have that feeling of annual right and you'll yeah, get yeah. the next one the and, next and battlefield's year not not quite annual i mean you no. know ea's definitely got more shooters in his portfolio but so you know in in their in their ideal world they do have something out every year even if it's not necessarily the next battlefield but yeah yeah unless something like the only way i can see it is if if they turn this into like the portal stuff kind of feels like it's a little bit more suited for live game ops and like a little bit less connected to one specific game or era but like everything else about it it almost feels like a game that maybe they should just spin that one out maybe after a year and then that becomes the thing that they the free to play one that they sort of fuck around with and get those people over i don't know but i just the three modes thing might actually also be the thing that shoots them in the foot because if they're not having enough player mm. spread this player spread is across three different various types of playing and, and the game then the, the way people are disliking the the kind of operators and some of the 2042 specific stuff seems like that's only nice. driving them further into the portal stuff where they're like no just give me the battlefield three guys give me the bad company that's, stuff that's what i've been enjoying that's, the most yeah, yeah exactly because of that. so and, and that those often work with a smaller player count because you've got these smaller maps from those games. Like this move to what is it? It's moved to 128 players 20, to a yeah. full a half a mag. Um, <laughs> half kind of a mag. gets yeah, them to use the uh, imperial measurement. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, a full a full half mag um, does get <laughs> them into that. Yeah, that position of just like okay, like those maps already feel like empty in a lot of places um, if you're not like where the action is. And if you suddenly have more and more players dropping out because they're all over playing Portal or they're off playing a different video game completely, uh, th- that whole section of the game is going to be dire. And all the marketing for this game was about the good feeling and Battlefield moments. Do you remember like yeah. all the like yeah. like yeah, yeah. announcements, all the pre-release marketing was like, we're not, you know, it's, it's just going to be fun. You're going to have a good time. You're going to create all these moments and like what's happened is the antithesis of that and so I, it's just it's it's a bummer here like reading about it and hearing about it because it's i just feel bad for everyone who's been working yeah. on this game because it's just they gotta dig themselves yeah. out of a hole really quickly yeah do you think uh... do you think it goes free to play at any point that, that sets no. a weird precedent for ea shooters yeah. right i don't know if that for for or for, the, for dice shooters probably yeah. more than anything else Right. They love to they they really would love to preserve the value of that game and not have to yeah. discount it and not have to do that sort of stuff. But I but Danny, I think you're right. Like there there probably is some world where if this thing goes like worst case scenario, 
maybe they do end up in a position where they're like, okay, we, we're taking portal, we're salvaging what we can out of portal and spinning that mode out into a different game and, and trying it again there, whether it's free to play or whether it's, here's a discounted, like here's a $30 entry into this mode. And right. you, know, you almost do it like, you know, Call of Duty would occasionally do the thing where it's like, hey, we'll sell you the game for 40 bucks if you don't want zombies. And for me, I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. Like the one, the one year they did that, I was like, great, I'll buy the PC version of this game even though I did already owned it on console before because I don't have to pay their full price for it. Like, that's great. So maybe they end up doing something there with like an upgrade path. Um, and Warzone lives totally happily side by side with other Call of Duty products. Like that's, we've normalized that whole thing. Like, so yeah. it, may, it would make sense for them to, the only way I can see it being weirder is if I guess EA have other free to play shooters that maybe they don't want to get in the way of, but like Apex, I mean, Apex yeah. is the is the one. Like, I, I wouldn't want, I, I, they probably shouldn't go fuck with Apex. Because they, I like, like don't release get the impression the, that game's still doing well. Yeah, like the four player squad version they have in 2142 mightn't be the one to spin out. But like, Portal doesn't step on Apex's toes. Like, it, it's a very no, weird, no. specific, fun, you know, it's the metaverse version of Battlefield. Sure. Which right, is like what yeah. Fortnite's doing, you know, which is what Warzone kind of does too. So with we some of the put it on the stuff. blockchain and let, hear me <laughs> out. This is how we get paid. Um, that's how I get my Battlefield Vietnam modern version. So that's that's <laughs> where I want it to go. <laughs> I want to listen to Creedence yeah. while. <laughs> oh, they'll do Caspian it. They just won't put they just won't put credence in it. Right. They'll be like that costs too much money to relicense that, so we didn't put any. How much is it going to possibly cost to to license credence Clearwater Revival? It's in like every single movie. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what could it be? Ten uh, dollars? <laughs> I I don't know. Yeah, I guess I, mean, I guess it is everywhere. But you know, it's like I the. the Battlefield can't be burning up the sales charts, right? So Yeah, and that's uh, also a joke. Music is so insanely fucking expensive. At least from what I know about it, licensing it in TV shows and movies. Holy fucking shit. Have a sing have a single and you're set for life. Even audio network stuff, if you want to do a commercial product, because we've sort of stumbled into that direction a couple of times, is like, oh boy. <laughs> that's a, that's a lot of money yeah. for this yeah, absolutely yeah. random song. Mm. I, it's Mm. You notice uh, if you have a if if you have a show that you really like the first season of, uh, and the season does well, you'll notice very quickly in the second season all of a sudden all the music kicks ass now <laughs> because they have more money to spend on all the fucking licensing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's 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 just it's interesting to. It's it's been a weird year for shooters like across the board, right? With you know seemingly Call of Duty not performing the way they they want it to, and Battlefield being kind of a mess, and then Halo launching early and free, even but back then for having Blood, this progression I feel like stuff and... hasn't had it didn't have its big moment either. I'd I'd love to know how how that's doing. Yeah, and or uh, Splitgate, uh, Mento brought a Splitgate right. in, in the chat. Like yeah. remember, Splitgate was like the biggest game uh, on the planet for like forty eight hours or something. And is then it still? I I, 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 I no can't idea. be right. I mean, they raised a bunch of money off the back of it being big, and then I feel like that was the last time I heard anyone talking about Splitgate. Um, and so yeah, I wonder. Yeah, is what's are you looking up a player a, a Steam chart? Of, yeah, to, of how many people are playing Splitgate? Yeah, I'm gonna go all the way. Yeah, so it peaked in like July 26th. They had like I'm looking at concurrence. I think this is on Steam charts. I'm not sure how good <clears> that <throat> looks, but it looks like it was up to like seventy thousand. And yeah, it looks like it's, it looks like it's, it looks like it's pretty low now. Like, yeah, like under ten percent, under five percent of what it was at peak. I don't know. Like sure. I, don't, I, I don't know how good this this chart is but that's what that's showing me Ooh. it's usually pretty good for steam stuff as far as i can tell but you know that okay. game did come out on consoles as well so there's there's players there but right um, so it, it looks like the covid you remember the bad part yeah and where Slipgate which, is which one where, where like the yeah okay the first bad peak oh. and split gate is basically kind of a herd immunity right now so kind of where we'd like to be is kind of what it looks like okay um, all right so which isn't great for us split gate perhaps no, no. Um, and then also a, an actual Halo came out. So playing a game that kind of has Halo vibes. Oh, yeah. Maybe you don't need that quite as much. Um, Halo, a Halo game and a game with Portal written in it. So they really have yeah. their, their lunch. Yeah, they really, yeah. Weird. Um, let's see. Last story here. Uh, according to the Adobe Digital Economy Index, uh, and also according to Kotaku, 
Xbox Series S seems to have come through the Thanksgiving shopping uh, season as the best-selling console. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's the yeah. only one on the shelf. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it's at a it's it's at a proper price point. And yep. the the Kotaku story kind of goes on to speculate, like, hey, you know, you have a lot of people that might want to check out Game Pass and play some of the indie games on there that aren't always going to benefit from the extra power that a Series X would have. Um, people playing on a budget, all that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, I, 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 it makes a ton of sense. I think, you know, Microsoft has been out there, I think since, since they started selling these things to begin with saying like, Hey, we think the series S is going to end up actually being the best selling one of these when, when all is said and done, um, which makes sense for the price point and all the other stuff. So I remember um, I was working retail when the 360 came out and that arcade one used to fly out. Remember oh. the one that didn't have a hard drive on it? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. Just, um, I forgot about so that. So much cheaper, yeah. But then people were coming and, and in that thing, I, buying the little memory cards. Right, exactly. Yeah, that that was always the thing. Like, kind of sitting from the side of things where it's like, I care enough about games that I know I want the high end version of the item, um, and and all that sort of stuff. Like, I think a lot of people get in that position of just like, who would even buy that thing? Who would bother buying a Series S? But yeah, it's like you have a ton of people that are way less casual with video games than probably the majority of the people who listen to this podcast are um yeah. and they would love to just get their hands on anything new uh especially well, when the series S there ain't shit fine. on the cell shelves yeah, yeah. my, my uh, brother just bought a playstation 4 oh. uh, and he like he's been playing his playstation 3 him and his son have been playing him, and he just got a four and he's like i couldn't find a five anywhere and he's like all the fucking games are cheap, so he has like fifty games to start with. Cool. So yeah, buying patterns of people are like so different when you're, you know, any any it happens. All, anyone who's worked, I'm sure, people in chat and stuff who worked in like a game shop at any stage or or worked in a in the games media. Sometimes you get wind of that sort of stuff, you know, where you realize it's like when the Grand Theft Auto Online thing happens. You're like, where were all these people talking about Grand Theft Auto Online? And apparently, it's the biggest game ever. It's just all right. these weird like pockets of game gaming that don't exist on message boards and don't email podcasts you know yeah <laughs> yeah i think that's i i yeah i i that's another thing i've been thinking a lot about lately is is like because that's those there are more it feels like there are more and more of those pockets popping up across gaming and gaming culture um and it's like it's probably like a healthy thing right like as games become this like huge increasingly large medium uh, and in, an increasing part of our just everyday culture, like, of course, like the same way, like, I don't, you know, I don't know what fucking movies are coming out or whatever, like, because there are a ton coming out all the time, or there were, um, you know, it feels like games have finally hit that in, in a lot of different ways, right? Like, like Ninja is still out there doing stuff. You don't hear about him in the news. I assume he's probably doing fine. Um, probably, probably still incredibly popular. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, you know, like it, it's like like there's there's people like that that are just quietly off, probably making a fantastic living uh, playing games. But like they're only going to come into the headlines here and there. And like he had his moment of just like, look at him. He's the biggest video game player on the world. And here he is on New Year's Eve uh, television, which was a ridiculous moment. Dabbing. Uh, yeah. Dabbing. Yes. Uh, and, and all that sort of stuff. And then it's like that moment kind of happened and now he's just back to doing his thing and, and probably doing fine. Uh, but like games but are it, in the same boat, right? It's just like, that is another big Minecraft update just hit. Yeah. And you know, it's got new music in it and all this other stuff. And you know, there's millions of people that are fucking stoked. Or angry, depending. I don't know. I haven't actually looked to see if people are stoked or angry. It's one, but it's one or the other. Uh, <laughs> and or both. I don't know. You just, yeah. It just feels like that. That's that's like a, like probably a good sign of health for the industry in a lot of ways. That that stuff just kind of fades into the background. Is just like, yeah, of course. No, this stuff's just going. It's video games. It's big. Video games are big. Guess what? Video games are big. Bigger than you can have time to think about all of you know you cannot wrap your mind around all of them anymore because there's so yeah. much happening all the time now that it's just like it, it's it used to be like at least be like like sub segmented maybe by like console like was the was the sort of buckets right. that people were in and then maybe there was an age thing but like generally pc players were kind of older and <laughs> like nintendo players yeah, were yeah. kind of a certain generation whereas now it's like yeah like what take 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 50 pc players and see all the different ways they play their games like it's it's a uh, 
it's wild. The monoculture is gone. The video game monoculture <laughs> that existed yeah. back when EGM, you know what I mean? Like it's just, we don't, exactly. it's, it's not that it's, way anymore. And it's, it's part of the, I think it's part of the crazy part about Halo coming out and doing really well is because Halo feels like it is of like a vastly different era than today's video games, right? It just, I think pre-release, there was a part of me that was just like, are people even gonna fucking want a new Halo anymore? Like, I'm, I'm sure like, you know, people that were playing Xboxes 20 years ago or 15 years, like, like they will have those memories and they of course want a new Halo, but you know, there's millions of people out there just playing Roblox and nothing else. Right. You know, yeah. are there are there enough people out there for a halo uh, to to make a big impact? And that's part of why, as as people complain about it being free to play and all this other stuff, like that's the smartest thing they could have done. Yeah. If, if they had just put out another standard ass halo multiplayer thing, you'd be like, cool. And there'd be a handful of people that were playing it on Game Pass and loving it there. And people that paid 60 bucks for it that are playing it there, but not nearly as many as they will get this way. Mm. and and the game will get way more support this way uh than if it had just come out as a traditional release and all this other stuff so it, it, it's it is mind-blowing when you sit down and really think about all that crazy shit because it, it, mm. it is a fucking crazy ass business for sure yeah c compare and contrast with gears of war 4 and see the the way it could have gone right you know, not, not that gears yeah. 4 was like a disaster or anything like that but it's just it's, it's orders of magnitude different it's you know and the, the response yeah. is showing that too yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's it for news. Why don't we take uh, one more break here, and we'll come back, and we'll check out a few emails. How about it? Cool. I'd All love right. to. Great. Great. Oh, breakfast cereal. I, uh, I've been known to eat breakfast cereal for breakfast most days and occasionally go back around a dinner time and say, you know what? Who has the time to do anything else than just keep eating breakfast cereal? But breakfast cereal, you know, those the stuff, the kids stuff that's out there on the shelves, that's, uh, it's full of sugar. It's, it's a zillion calories. It's not, you know, maybe you shouldn't be packing it away. Uh, you know, maybe if you're trying to eat a little better, you know, you're trying to have a healthy breakfast, uh, you know, that, that, that's, that's where Magic Spoon comes in. Magic Spoon has these amazing flavors that you love, but without all that bad stuff, which can make it go down a little bit easier as a midnight snack right before bed. So if you're trying to cut down on carbs and sugar and unhealthy food, hey, Magic Spoon, let's break it down. Let's get into it. You wanna know about it? All right, here we go. What's about, what's Magic Spoon all about? Zero grams of sugar, 13 or 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. It's only got 140 calories per serving, and it's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. You can build your own box. That's right, a custom bundle of flavors, including the new and returning super popular cookies and cream and maple waffle. They're back permanently. These blew off the shelves when they uh, introduced to them as a limited offer. But now they are back for real, joining cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, and cinnamon. That's, uh, that's a lot of flavors to choose from. And you can put them together in a bundle. So if you're just like, you know what? I want a little maple waffle. Ah, I'm feeling fruity this month and maybe a little bit of peanut butter. Maybe you're in your head, you're like, hey, what if I took the maple waffle and the peanut butter and mixed them together? You can do it. You're a grown up. Who's going to stop you? Not me. Not me. Definitely not me. You can go to magicspoon.com slash bomb right now to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. And you can use our promo code bomb at checkout to save $5 off your order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will give you your money back, no questions asked. That's right. They're not gonna be like, hey, what, how, how's the weather? What's going on? No, zero questions. Zero questions. They're like, Here, here's your money. Here you go. Remember, you can get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash bomb and use the code bomb to save $5 off. Wow. Thanks, Magic Spoon. Is the stress of daily life getting on your nerves? Is it uh, building up in the shoulders and the legs and that sort of stuff, huh? Is it? Well, look, hey, Theragun can help make your days tension 
free. What is Theragun? That is a great question. Here is your answer. Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. That's right, the full triangle, depth, speed, power. And it's quiet as an electric toothbrush. The Gen 4 Theragun doesn't just feel good. It gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension using Theragun's signature percussive therapy, which goes 60% deeper than vibration alone. 60%, that's a high number. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just, you know, hey, just from living. That's where the Theragun Gen 4 comes in. It's nice, it got an OLED screen on it, you know, all sorts of design stuff, different nubs to put on there, all those. Just go to the site and you can check it out. It's got an app, of course. It's the 90s, we all have apps. Uh, the Theragun app learns from your behaviors and suggests guided routines. So you're not just like sitting there going, you know, wherever. It's like, hey, why don't you, why don't you try over here? Why don't you try over here? Why don't you try over here? All that sort of stuff uh, is, is right there at your fingertips, uh, which is nice. You know, you get some help there. Theragun is trusted by 250 professional sports teams like Real Madrid, which I think is a sports team as well as elite athletes like Paul George, DeAndre Hopkins, Maria Sharapova, and hundreds of thousands of customers. That's a lot of people. You can try Theragun for 30 days, starting at only $199 by going to therabody.com slash bomb right now to get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash bomb, therabody.com slash bomb. All right, we're back here with the Giant Bombcast. Once again, it's time for emails. Bombcast at giantbomb.com is where you send your emails. And we'll look at them. If you are interested in voicemails, take it down the road, Jack. Yep. Go over there. Go over there. we got a whole dump truck full of them on Thursdays. There's so <laughs> many of them. There's so many voicemails. <laughs> That's good. There's, look, there's a lot of dumps. It's a yeah. lot of dumps. It's a lot yeah. of dumps. Need a whole truck for him. A lot of you know, just, just start playing them. Just like leave this chat up twenty four seven and just start just playing them just to get them out there into the open for people to hear. Someone had an idea where I we just use them as GB infinite bumpers. Ah, yeah, that's uh, a fine idea. idea. We we only have I think three of those, so we probably <laughs> should make some more. Um, it's not a. I like that. Yeah. Um, but then they get to be too long. Anyway, long dumps. I know. I get it. Yeah, yeah. long dumps. I mean, uh, just uh, just a quick uh, just check in for you know some people maybe haven't heard the voicemail dump truck before. You can uh, you can get that feed. You might you might find it on your podcast apps under Giant Bombcast Aftermath. Still, I don't know if that has all been renamed across the board yet. It, sometimes it takes time for those name changes to filter through uh, yeah. the world. Jan, for people who haven't uh, heard. Uh, the voicemails. I just want to ask this one question: What percentage of the voicemails you've listened to have been about pegging? Actually, you know, we've had we we've tried to skew it where it's like a call to action type deal. You know, we'll really uh -huh. try and try and do like that the topic of the people... week sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, from like the hundred or so that I've listened to, one is vaguely about pegging, and I was Got a little it. disappointed. Okay. I want yeah, to say one was very directly about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, last last episode, oh, yes, there was one oh, that was I'm overtly curious, like, in, in, straight up about in, it. In, in the wake Fence. of taking that voicemail, because you know, obviously, the calls you take Peaking, the week before yeah. inf inform the calls you, that uh, come in for the following sure. week. So sure, uh, they definitely influence. Yeah, yeah. The one yeah. that was that seemed like it was kind of about pegging. I think they were also just talking about that one Seinfeld episode where George got tied up. Um, oh, and, and yeah. pegs oh. for thirty minutes. Yes, awesome. yes. Yeah. I thought Classic they were like guys. trying to swear off pegging for a month or something. Yes, uh, I believe that was the Hanukkah episode. Yeah, couldn't be me, no baby. Uh, what are we talking about? All right, uh, Uncle emails. Leo. Uh, <laughs> uh, anonymous <laughs> writes in and says, "Of course." Uh, uh, was DJ Hero ahead of its time? With the initial popularity of Fuser showing how a DJ simulator could be successful, would a music game with a turntable peripheral have done better now than in the late 2000s or early 2010s? That was the. I feel like that was the one time anyone would have given a shit. And I like DJ I Hero, but like I, I, I love 
DJ Hero. Yeah, but it was cool. It, so cool. It was great. So that was a, <laughs> like, that game. So cool. Whole game was predicated on mashups, though. And when DJ yeah, Hero yeah. was oh. coming out, like bootlegs and mashups, like had I feel like they had already fallen out of favor in such a major way that, that I remember going to an event. They had an event in San Francisco, and I remember going to it. Like uh, they took over some nightclub and set up a bunch of stations. It was the first time anyone had really seen the game or heard any of the music from it. I, I want to say, and I remember showing up and being like. This is really cool, but fucking mashups? Really? Are we doing fucking mashups again? Because they had just gone so hard for so long that I they had completely fizzled out. Like no one was fucking talking about mashups again. And so you had like this, like like the British dev team going like, "Oi, gov, we got the bootlegs back." And you're like, "All right, I guess so." And at the yeah. time, it was just like, "This is really cool, but I don't think anyone's gonna want to hear any of the music in this game other than me." And then it came out as it, I think it did okay for them enough for them to make a sequel. Um, it, right. it was like right after like girl talk was, was huge. And everyone was <laughs> like, Oh, that, this is over now. Right. <laughs> I think, I yeah. think also you know? like the dance scenes in America and the UK are always on totally. They're on different, like, of course, yeah. rotations. Right. Like, but like, so. that's the thing. Like, I feel like the, you know, the, in the UK, that stuff was even older. At older that point. Was, so maybe at that yeah. point it was due for a comeback or something, but like, like I remember listening to all that stuff as it was kind of coming out of the UK. And then, you know, you started seeing like all these compilations, like, what is it? Like the, the best mashups in the world come from San Francisco volume one and shit like that. And, <laughs> um, and then like the local alternative rock station started having like a mashup hour. Wow. Like that they were broadcasting out of the Metreon and shit. Like oh that. yeah. And, RIP yeah. live one Oh five. Yeah, yeah. Is it not? Is it completely gone? It must still it, exist. In some, really? No, they renamed it to Dave FM. What the fuck is oh, Dave FM? Dave oh, they went FM. fucking Dave, Dave FM. Oh, Dave. Oh, holy shit! There's a, new, there's a new radio station that I know. I, I first off, digest that phrase. Yeah. Right. Uh, number one, and it's like all '90s hip hop. Like that's all it is. It's just that. Right, so you know okay. everything that's going to be played, and it's fine. But it's just so weird that like there's this time capsule radio station, and yeah. they and don't the, run I mean, commercials. So I'm like, how uh, that the, how is money happening here? It's very strange. It's radio, yeah, 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 no money is happening. In New York. Yeah. yeah, no, um, for sure, it's very weird. Yeah, it's. I mean, satellite radio is is full of that stuff. Like that's the whole. That was the whole oh, yeah. allure of satellite radio. Out niche of the after gate niche was, after niche, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. But Only even they Nirvana don't put songs. all of their. Yeah, they don't even put all of their best <laughs> shit on the radio anymore. Now they're like, well, we've got an app, and they went and bought um, Pandora and all this other shit. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, like, then they have like ten times the number of channels on the app, and you're like, well, wait a minute. Why? If I'm already listening to music on my phone, why wouldn't I just listen to fucking music on my phone? Instead of having to go listen to a station, this is fucking stupid. Like it's just the whole thing yeah. kind of breaks down at a certain point. I guess, um, but there's there's definitely people like me that don't want to go out and curate that shit. That mm -hmm. I'm not sure. that deep into it. And it's like, give me a f fucking just a, va a vague uh, playlist of what <laughs> what I like, and I'll be happy. Just yeah, serve it I to just, me. I just got bitter when they took the Tony Hawk station off of satellite radio and only put it on the app for a while there. Wow. Uh, I don't know, yeah. man. I got, I got hair nation uh, in my car. I got it on my TV. I'm good. That's all, all I right. need. All right. Um, as much as, as much as DJ hero did sort of like, you know, lean into a fairly like old school way of, of making that a fun experience. That Gwen, Gwen Stefani, Rick James thing fucking slapped. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, there's there a some lot good of, I mean, songs I, in there. Like people ripped the soundtracks for those games and, and put them out there, which you know, they never sold them as far as I know. But like right. that stuff's out there if you want it. Some of it has the fucking crowd noise from the game in it, which is of not Of course, awesome. yeah, yeah. Um, oh, weird. But uh, yeah, there's some, there's some fucking really good shit in there. There's some really <laughs> inventive, fun mashups but when that game got yeah. announced i assumed it was going to be like fucking dj cubert presents dj hero like just turntablism not mashups and yeah. i think as much as i would have been more interested in like something that approximates turntablism it's probably a better video game the way it is uh, a better rhythm game uh anyway so um I don't know if it's I don't know if it was ahead of its time, but if anything, it felt like it, when it was first coming out, it felt like it was behind the times in, in a weird, weird way. Um, but yeah, very spin-offy. Uh, felt very spin-offy. 
yeah of just like yeah. what do you okay yeah sure um good stuff Joe from New York writes in and says, do you think videogames.com redirecting to giant bombs had any effect on the types of emails you get? Anything from weird corporate stuff to angry parents mad about those video games they bought their children? That's R Rory gets the, yes. the support yep. email, so he kind of gets Absolutely. the... <laughs> the the brunt of that but I, I think that stuff just comes from like people googling like the name of a video game and then going like well here it is i bought it and you people need to fix it and mm -hmm. so he'll get support requests from people trying it to ain't fix help him like <laughs> like like yeah. when, it, when was the last time you you were like we're looking up information on like you know mufflers and you typed mufflers.com to see if that was a good place yeah like it's like the you know, does that like an AOL keyword like I'll yeah. keyword. Say, <laughs> if you're looking for adult content that's the methodology that you fall under yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i guess mufflers, you're right yeah pokemon bdsm that hot muffler com. action baby yes mm -hmm. Mufflers.com is available, but they want to sell it to you in a monthly, like, well, they, they just want to charge you monthly to, to rent. use it. <laughs> yeah. They want to charge you $3,000 for the first month, and then the price goes up. A oh, 4% yes. annual increase. Like, what? That is called extortion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, rent a fucking domain and then build a business on it and then be like, oh, they raised the prices a zillion percent on me and they technically own it. And now my business is fucked. What a what fucking scam wow, ass smart. shit is that? Smart. Do you remember the, the Sean McInnes story where he was walking down the street in San Francisco one day? Because this uh -huh. is back when games it used to redirect to GameSpot before uh, right. all did the, the little switcheroo there. Um, mm. And uh, <laughs> uh, he was walking down the street and some guy just like was like eating the sandwich or something. and went... Videogames.com. So, and this, yeah. this was like fucking what? Like wow. like ten years after that was video game spot or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. Like so, like clearly yeah. some guy just had a bookmarked as videogames.com yep. still, yeah. and like called him out on the street. And he was Sean was like, "What the fuck?" Because he didn't even know that it redirected <laughs> oh, to games. Really? Yeah. You know, nobody that's, knew. And he said it to one of the guys, and they were like, "Oh yeah, that's that's fine. Fine. He was yeah. like totally bamboozled by it." Yeah, that's For sure. <laughs> yeah. People in the street walking up to me and shouting nuke.com. Where's that? Yeah. Let's get that happening. Um, let's see. Uh, Bernie in Philadelphia wants to know uh, about our most anticipated unannounced game, which I have an answer to this that I'm not actually going to give. Uh, but let's uh let's go through it many years ago maybe 2010 i think someone wrote into the bombcast asking what developers next game would you be most excited to have in hand today uh i can't remember the specific episode but i remember folks answering like infinity ward rockstar naughty dog and maybe visceral which was probably after like modern warfare 2 and gta 4 uncharted and dead space came out here we are a decade later and i'll ask the same question if you could play any developers next game right now fully baked and ready to go, whose game would you choose? Let's say, I mean, you know, and, and, you know, obviously there are announced games, like let's exclude those. Like what mm -hmm. unknown game are you just like, I want to see the next game from this studio. Mobius. <laughs> the Outer Wilds that's, people. That's, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, okay, yeah. That, um, the Outer, Outer Wilds is really good. The DLC, I know I've been banging on about it, is unbelievably good. I think it's fantastic i want to see what those folks do with whatever idea they come up with next there's a very talented group of folks uh whatever there may secretly be working on the ftl and into the breach team right mm. yeah. subset okay. uh yeah. subset games yes yeah there you go. yeah just just uh, two of them just make two? mine make mine capcom and street fighter 6 with without ono at the helm um yeah. he kind of you steered us astray, I think, and I, I think we're back on track. Uh, and I want to see where they take six. Have um, you tried Luke? Luke is out. I tried Luke last night. Yeah, he seems like a straightforward motherfucker. Uh, Luke, generic as shit, <laughs> and he's got he almost Shoto like you know. I, I mm. no real inspiration. Right. I don't know. I was not For that to be the character they put out that says this is the guy that's going to be of, like yep. the future of the Street Fighter franchise, like maybe that's uh, maybe that's yeah, not a great that sign, might be telling. But, yeah, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. I, I definitely, I just want to know. Yeah, um, I'm going to say like I want to see the next shooter from Respawn. <laughs> yeah, I would mm. say just the next game from Respawn, but I wonder if that will end up being Star Wars, like a Star Wars mm. game. 
And so like as much as I would be interested in seeing that, I think I would be more interested in seeing like what is the next shooter out of that studio, assuming they make one someday, whether it's a Titanfall 3 or something else. Uh, that's and, and you know, Nether Realm. I'd be curious to see what yeah. they end up doing yeah. next. Mm -hmm. Does anyone know what Mike? Thecla are working on? The John Blows spot? They haven't done an anything again on things. Got a lot of or... got a lot mm -hmm. of jugs to fill over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just real busy. Pissing simulator. Yeah. PS. Not the first thing that came to mind was Super Giant. Whatever they're doing next. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Right on yeah. fucking Hades for all time. Go for it. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It's been what Just is it? Three, it? What three platforms years? is Hades years? not out on yet? Uh, is it on iOS or a, probably a calculator not yet. somewhere? I don't Maybe think they not. have yeah. native versions on Series X and Five yet. I don't think. Uh, they do See, have Five. I, I have a sealed copy of Hades for PlayStation Five. So oh, you're right. Here. God, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, they did yeah, do they those. Do. It's the only physical, like, current gen console game I own is a PS Five copy of Hades. <laughs> um. <laughs> Ooh. In fact, this is going to be the first disc I put into my Xbox Series X. Oh my god! I believe. <laughs> I wow. So, wow! We'll so glad you sands. didn't get the digital version. Then, <laughs> really worth the right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Really screwed up. Um, all right. Uh, Richie from uh, Liverpool writes in and says, "I love a good fake currency name, but which one ranks the highest?" And he Zenny. gives a few examples. If you're having trouble, yeah, Zenny is is Zenny Maka Gil Gade. No, Gil's pretty uh, good, but. Um, mm. Isk. Isk. Yeah. Isk. That's, that's, yeah, isn't that the... The, the EVE the, online the EVE currency online is yeah. Isk. Yeah. Oh, wow. I like Isk. Isk is good. Isk is pretty good. I think Zenny is always my go-to. What's Zenny? Yeah, that's really good. Zenny's in a bunch of Capcom games. Forgotten yep, Worlds yeah. is probably the first one, if okay. I had to guess. But um, but Zenny's been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, true. Yeah, What's you know, the cyberpunk okay. one? Eddies. Eddies. Yeah. Did that's you say Eddies, for something? Yeah. It's like oh, yeah. that was Euro the slang, right? dollar, yeah. isn't that? Yeah. 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 It's Euro dollar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Euro dollar. Euro what was the way? Was the wager just gold? I guess. I th probably. I don't that's know. That's all they deal with is gold bars. Gold. Yeah. Platinum. Um, it's a pain. <laughs> favorite yeah. video game uh, drug. Uh, hey, what's Hayes. the one in Hayes? Yeah. What's the, yeah, oh, Hayes yeah. from Hayes. No, what's the, um, Nectar? That remake of Narc, they did, the, the reboot of Narc <laughs> they did with Bill Bellamy in it has some, it has a bunch fucking of real what? drugs in it. Wait, fucking yes, what? The, the PS2 and Xbox remake of Narc that has Bill, Bill Bellamy, Bellamy in it. Uh, Bill Bellamy is one of the voices in Midway's reboot of Narc. Uh, oh my God. Oh. As Marcus Hill in wow. 2005. What? I yeah, I was thinking box. of Starsky and Hutch, the one with Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Jesus Christ! I was watching this like a. Uh, this was when I lived in the Midwest, and they had an early morning, you know, news segment where they were talking about the Starsky and Hutch movie, and she pronounced it Star Sky and Hutch, and I I will <laughs> never forget that. <laughs> it's pretty good. But Bill Bellamy. Uh, Bill Bellamy. I can't. Oh. Uh, okay. Michael Madsen. And Ron Perlman, wow. yeah, oh. star studded. Okay. Yeah, that was that <laughs> game. Okay, that game had a licensed soundtrack on it that had like that smell on it. Like every song was just like another fucking dumb drug song, and it was at a time when we were starting to try to review video game soundtracks, and they were very adamant that like, well, you have to cover the Narc soundtrack, and <laughs> and they were buying ads specifically for the soundtrack or some stupid shit. There was weird pressure around us covering that soundtrack in a way that I was just like, you fucking uh, suck. Yeah. Sales team. Um, Bill Bellamy, there's star this, there's of a fake drug. Like, there's like two. Yeah, there's a bunch of real drugs in that game, but then like the a liquid soul. There it is. I found it. Liquid, liquid soul. 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 Like S O U L or S O L? Yes, S O U L. Uh, liquid soul. Liquid soul is the craziest Damn. drug in that game. As your and then, my favorite, my favorite from a TV show is from Rivendale or Riven, not Rivendale. Riverdale. Riverdale. Yeah, Riverdale. Oh. The jingle jangle. They call it <laughs> jingle jangle. The fucking jingle jangle. That's their drug what, uh, of choice. The, the was it like Legend of the Raven? Whether the Carmen Electra trauma movie? 
where she uh, dies and comes back to life and what? is like a, an av avenging, like vigilante like figure that and helps familiar, her sister yeah. out. In that in that movie, there's a bunch of like weird hillbillies out in the middle of nowhere doing <laughs> drugs. And it's like they're kind of talking about meth, it seems like, but they keep calling it little green men. <laughs> okay. Uh, and they keep talking about the drug as little green men. And that's a really wow. good one. Final Fight Streetwise, yeah. everyone's okay. favorite Final Fight game. Um, Very good. Which, like, when you think of NARC, you think of Final Fight Streetwise. Uh, <laughs> at least I do, because my brain is broken. But also, because it also has a fake drug in it uh, that is called Glow. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's ladies not Ladies Wrestling League, yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 it's exactly and, that. Uh, reference. Glow, glow. I feel like shout I bring to, this shout up. Shout out to Fizz Tech. Fizz Tech? Tech? That What's the, that? That was, that was the Witcher one. Oh, oh, that's right. Yes, all the Witcher poison. Yeah. The, yes. I, I feel Skuma. like I, I bring it up all the time about fake drugs. I don't know why. It's always in my head. But the one from Minority Report. What was this? Uh, I don't remember at all. Heroin. Heroin? Like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I believe, I believe they call it. It's called dude. Percocet. It's weird. I they call it's, it never heard of it. Narrowin. Narrowin. Like, and, oh, and, and the slang is clarity. Okay. Okay. I believe. I, I, someone who's seen Narrowin, that movie so like, way more like often. New heroin? Is that the, is that or, the thinking or there? like a neurological... The okay. heroin, Neuroin? Slant. Neuroin then? Neuroin. I believe that's what it is called. It's like that little inhaler thing. Oh yeah, hmm. that's good. I think Nuke from Ro RoboCop Two has to rank pretty high. The weird like yeah. in your neck yeah. thing. That's that's all. That's always a fan. That's a fan favorite. The that's kids the love slow mo Nuke. as well. Kids love dredge. Right. It? It yeah. an asthma inhaler. What was the one in Deus Ex? Ambrosia. Was the was yeah. The, I don't know. That's not a good name. It's too many that's syllables. A, a yeah. yeah, it's a bit, bit meaty. Yeah. It's got to be it's one no syllable, two syllables. You know. Some um, drug. Like Little oh, Green Man. man. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Mm. Uh, so people keep sending this to me because the this the internet is nothing if not predictable. Uh, some guy out there has uh, collected 2,706 copies of keep Sneak that. King. Yeah. And Jeff Grisham so is photo of them. Is. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, I still have I, I I have like twelve copies. I think is is where I'm at on that one because for a while there, someone clearly bought a lot of them off of eBay and was just sending them to me one at a time from a tattoo. Like they were parlor. coming from the same address. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think I still stopped those. opening them. Okay, good. <laughs> um, Steve Bannon's Sneak King. Um, oh God. <sighs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, he he was he was somehow affiliated with that. I forget exactly how. Um, he was a gold farmer as well, wasn't he? Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, so, what game Always would you guys like to own twenty seven hundred and six copies of? It's Is just there any so that you'd stupid. want to build a Jerry uh, Maguire esque pyramid out of? Uh, oh, fucking. Anything made by uh by uh who was it? Thief and Tomb Raider, who was all those boxes who did Oh the, the trapezoid, trapezoid fucking yeah, yeah, yeah all yeah. the IDOS boxes, yeah. IDOS sure. oh, yeah. yeah. Make you make a real good pyramid <laughs> out of IDOS boxes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like having like my turn 40 out of 3DO copies. boxes. <laughs> it's like having forty copies of McGruber. What kind of insane asshole does something like that? <laughs> fucking yeah, weirdo. You'd have to be a yeah. human piece of you'd shit be... to, to, to do something With like that. The worst kind of human. A Just demon. Yeah, awful. Yeah. What's the best from like, hell? What's the, what's the coolest box? I'm trying. Like I can't even. Like <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. Did what is the box? In box. Covers in box covers, like just the entire every wall. You know, is it Mega Man for the NES? You know, is it? Oof. That'd be good wallpaper, I, actually. That yeah. repeating. The you know. Steel Book Quake Three One, just in an entire room. That would be. That'd be good. That'd industrial. be good. Industrial. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you know, if you want to like maximize your return on this investment, you go with just like a straight up Super Mario Brothers One, and then <laughs> sell them to dupes. You get them all graded, and then fucking. Oh yeah. Rip people off for the next five years. Just let ten out at a time. Like, oh look at this. Oh, well, look, About a million more. dollars. Uh, just recently unearthed. Discovery. Yeah. Wouldn't you just debase this though? You'd flood the market. It would. It would. Well, that's well, why you you, you, you hang on to them. You, you sell like one feed. at a time. Yeah. You know? 
Come on. Which is what I'm Come sure on, the people that did that scam will probably try to do now. Um, Quantitative easing of the uh, Mario, Mario <laughs> yes, <Kart>. exactly. <laughs> um, Michael in Seattle writes in and says, do you look up the set list for a concert you're going to ahead of time? Why or why not? It's no of, you know, fucking of way. Bands of, yeah, no, no I, I would not. Oh, I, would not I, I feel like we've been asked. That's now two episodes in a row where we're being asked some pretty concert upsetting etiquette. concert going questions. I like that. I yeah. do that. I do. I, I like to know. Yeah. Cause they usually, I mean, the bands usually change it between destinations. That's anyway, like the time, looking at like the menu before thing, yeah. you get to the restaurant. No, that's crazy. fine. That's fine. No, well, that's what's okay. wrong with that? That's part okay. of the that's... process because it's part of the conversation. It's part of the experience. <sighs> okay. <sighs> You go and well, don't you want that menu. prior knowledge and go there and you can inform people you can be you yeah know, but what, you know what are you you're gonna get you can, like you, oh here's your man. no thanks i'm already prepared no, i know no, what no, i'm no, doing here look, you can I be know, surprised right, by their specials though yes so you can listen to the specials too jan you could peruse the menu and then listen to the specials on top of that Come yeah on. i was listening to the specials but, the other day but then if you <laughs> like if it's a long nice. wait for a restaurant are you not going to look at the menu not gonna look. It's part of the it's part of the dinner going experience. I think there are maybe some bands where if you have a specific like of a specific era of their output yes. that you might go like, oh, they're playing a lot of stuff from their newer album, stuff, right? Whatever album that I don't you know, that on, I don't really care the, for, right? Yeah, like you might want to know, but I think the the risk you run into knowing a set list is like there's always going to be a handful of changes where they're like, oh, that we have two or three songs that rotate in or out from city mm -hmm. to city. If you get amped for one specific song and then it doesn't get played, you're going to feel like I got fucking ripped off. I went to the bad concert <laughs> uh, and we got to follow them. We got to go to Fresno and catch the next date and make sure that, we, you know, like some fucking insane <laughs> thing like that. Um, I, so but I would you idea, like the, would you look at the set list and then be like, well, I'm not going to this show? Like, no. Right. No. Maybe. Depends on the band. Like, I think there, there are probably some. There are probably some bands, and I can't. I cannot think of one right now. But there are probably some bands where. Okay, let's say, for example, and this is not going to happen for a variety of reasons. Van Halen. Uh, Go on. I would like the 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 lineup obviously matters, but also sure if they're going to play a, a bunch of stuff off of like so Diver Down, like basically anything yes. outside of 1984 and example. Van Halen one. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> you did a fair. You did the only. You did the only exception to the rule of that question. Like that is Metallica. The band. Like you know, like, like any anger, long exactly. running band. Yeah. Like you know, if you if you sure if you sure. go to see a Metallica concert and then there are people fighting in a triangle shaped boxing ring, uh, which is Fucking exactly invisible what happened. Fucking kid in, comes on and it was just yeah. like yeah. That happened so, in Texas over the weekend. By the way, people oh. fought in a triangle. It's okay. and Fat Joe was there. It, it is uh, wow. I, I I will look at the set list. Uh, I didn't get to see Mastodon when they were in New York last weekend. I uh, looked at the set list to see what I missed. Yeah, I, I twist the, the knife deeper into my yeah. chest is what I did. I was like, yeah. oh, I really would have loved to see him play that. Never seen him play that live. No one's like you don't go to a Metallica is. show to hear fucking like what off stuff off like what Damage Incorporated or something like yeah. that. You want to know yeah, like okay, it. obviously they're going to play the classics, but how right. deep are they going to go into the old shit? And sure. you know th that that would that could help swing you one way or the other. I think. What about if a band or an artist goes on tour for a specific album? Would you look up a set list to see what they might do for an encore? No, I, I mean, that, that is completely it, determined by like how much I care about that album. Okay. It's, it's rough because in a way, I feel like you'd be spoiling yourself a little bit. Part of that, and I get this is not a one-to-one -one menu analogy like I used earlier, <laughs> but you are spoiling yourself in a way that I feel like takes away some of the all like what they're doing this now no way exactly. you know like that's yeah. cool they're gonna that, come that, back that on, they're gonna cool. do that uh i i think it's making an informed decision 
whether well, or not you that, wanted that's one of those subjective things right you yeah can't be, sure. you can't be legislating for everyone there you know and, and there was all that you know i hate it because i hate spoilers for movies and shit but there is a lot of psychology that points that the opposite is actually more satisfying that when people know what's coming that like sort of christmas you, you actually enjoy the the entire process more and, and that's why i think that you run the risk especially with a with a band that is going to change their setup a little bit or something like i i I feel like there's definitely been cases where it's like, oh, they did three encores and then they come to your city and they only do one. And you're like, oh. <laughs> oh, we saw Yeah, maybe they weren't feeling the crowd. Maybe they weren't feeling the crowd. These, yeah. Because you know, like, Toledo sucks time, tonight. Yeah. yeah. We're and going then you're home. you're pissed because you're like, man, the crowd robbed me of these other songs that I really would have liked to have heard. Or, you know, like there, there's there's only disappointment to be found in, in some of those situations, right? Because all you do is find out like, oh, they played a better set somewhere else. Um, and that, that never feels good. Yeah. And I mean, there, Just, there are very few bands that switch it up substantially. There are bands that like, will swap out the segments, you know, they do like three, mm, three songs and a break yeah, and yeah. that, whatever it is, they'll, they'll move that around, but like different actual songs is pretty rare. You know, going yeah. back to your menu analogy, Bacalar, I would be yeah. disappointed if I look up a menu and they didn't have the thing anymore because they ran out. Well, that's mm -hmm. a thing. Number one. And also... Uh, I've I've thought about it a little more. I will admit I've like quickly skimmed just so I know like the universe I'm yeah, about to get yeah. into. Right. Or I'm like, or I'm just I like, oh, yeah. okay, it's all like American Grill shit. Sweet. Like I'm gonna be fine. Or like, oh, it's all like Asian fusion. Sh okay, we're good. We're good to go. But I won't be like, I'm gonna get this, and then I'm gonna get like, I just can't do it. Can't do it. I feel like if I'm looking at a menu for a place, oftentimes it's like, do I need to eat before I go to this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Does this restaurant suck shit enough that I'm gonna be like, oh fuck this whole menu and, and just be don't like, go. Well, then sometimes, don't sometimes, go. Sometimes, sometimes you have to fucking go. Yeah. Sometimes you don't. Inescapable you dinner. Have to go. Yeah. <laughs> um. Do I have to eat before this dinner? <laughs> do I gotta go get some food before we go get some food or what? Put some, uh, put some tots in your pocket. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Nugget uh, yeah, out. Granola tots, bar. Baby. I had three Cliff bars down my pants for when. I gotta go to the bathroom again. Yeah. <laughs> they have a drug go problem. The, go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking I granola all over your shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a bunch of granola in your mustache? <laughs> Maybe. It's a weird bathroom. <laughs> um, Mike from Minnesota writes in and says, how good or perhaps how complicated does a dip need to be before it's okay to eat it with a spoon? Or rather, what are the sufficient qualities of a dip that you would feel comfortable eating it with a spoon? I'm not talking, oh, there's a little bit of French onion left in this container and I just want that flavor, so let me get it. I'm talking full-on company potluck. Janice oh. brought her bomb-ass seven-layer dip, but I'm not feeling like peanut <laughs> chips right now, but I'm still going to take two scoops. No. You, if, it's it's a email. if it's a company potluck, you can't spoon the yeah. dip. No. And this, this email could also have just been, what's the difference between soup and dip? And that could have been the whole, or the whole thing. Too. Yeah, I feel like justify gotta, my sin. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, We're all like want to be absolved right? of their food crimes, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, I, Eat what I, makes you happy. I love to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Unless yeah, that, unless I mean, that means you're going and just buying a thing of fucking Frito Lay bean dip at the store and spooning it into your face. Maybe don't do that. Mm, but or maybe. I mean, but someone I've puts out there, a seven baby. layer dip, right? And you're not using a chip to scoop that up? Like, that just seems wrong, too. Just suck it off the chips and just hide the chips later if you, yeah. if you have a weird... <laughs> suck it off the scoop yeah. and just hide fling it away. Chips. Just give that one like, to the dog. Yeah. You know? I, I can't the chips in a, chips. in a potted plant uh, near the food or something. Like, right, it's fine. Get this. Put it in an ashtray, you know? Yeah. No difference. <laughs> Tell people you're, you know, it's like, oh, there's too much gluten in these chips. You know, just something, you yeah. know, this, this, you could probably make up something <laughs> if you got to. But uh, I don't know. So where's the line, I guess, at that point? I, I guess salsa. You could just kind uh, of, I could no. see it a little bit. No. What, like, uh, I could, I could spoon a salsa. Yeah, no, my partner drinks salsa. Dr nice. Drinks it. I've, th I've yeah. almost been there. I've almost yeah. been there. What you, you know, what alcohol could you mix into a salsa? If, I mean, if we're talking about a good drinking salsa, like, vodka. what are you putting like a yeah, yeah, vodka. vodka in there? Yeah. Or like a wine, maybe like almost a sangria adjacent. Sangria. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Too uh, fruity. And then put I, some Diet Coke in there too. 
Uh, I think I would uh, sp- can I, spoon up some hummus, maybe. Can I tell you? It's not a, yeah, I, that's not a. I got. I yes, have a. I can. have a food crime. I'd like to call in okay. about. Uh, okay. I saw someone oh, over my Thanksgiving holiday. Mm. What the fuck did this Don't guy talk do? about your kid he, like this. No, 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 no. He, well, he, no, this was not him. He, I saw someone take uh, hot chocolate. Okay. That was like a milk-based hot chocolate. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then thought the move was to just pour a a really healthy amount of vodka in there. Oh yeah, I'm I'm all, I'll fuck with yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But milk and vo- like I don't know. Well, like a white I don't Russian know, is basically. Yeah. I mean, that's cream, yeah. but it's I guess, not. I guess that's what no one has white Russian cream. around. So you make white Russians yeah. with milk. I've, yeah. I've, I've okay. I, it just seemed wrong at the time. No, that's but I guess right. that is what a, a white Russian is kind of adjacent to that. Yeah, yeah. Mai Tai is not a million miles away either. You know, it's like, it's it's any liqueur, ch- sweet thing with some with a with a, a white spirit yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Then. Lord knows the coffee that's shop days. Say, like, chicken wing or something. <laughs> no, I mean, look, I've was traumatized enough. I don't want to unpack that, but yeah. Lord knows the mm. coffee shop days. People just be pouring up a little bit of Jamie into those cups of coffee. Mm. Sure. Oh, yeah, sure. That's, yeah. Irish, Irish coffee, baby. That's, mm-hmm. You just got to you gotta get through the day by any means necessary. We've all been there. Paul writes in, last email, unless there's more. Uh, <laughs> Dear Bombcast, more. you can make a keyboard from a diverse set of sourced parts, but what about a mouse? The only custom mice I can find are those offered by the big mouse companies. There doesn't seem to be a thriving mouse. mouse builder scene. What the fuck, Bacalar? Sincerely, Paul. Yeah, is that the next thing? Or... This is my fault. Yeah. Um, it's harder to make. Right? I've seen, like, like uh, I've seen people swap out the switches, the little clicky, the things that make mm. the the mouse click. Yeah, it's uh, it's a similar. It's a very universal switch. They're in pinball machines. They're in arcade machines. Oh. Um, I think it's just like customizing that part of it, but I have not. If there is a scene, it is nowhere near as big as the the keyboard scene. I've I, yeah. and if there is one, I've barely been exposed to it. I, I feel like the closest I ever got to that was like, you know, I think some company bought them. Mad Cats bought them or something, but like there was like the Cyborg Rat Seven, and it was like a yeah, mouse that, that was, came with that a Mad bunch Cats of thing. parts and weights. Yeah. And so yeah. if you wanted to, it was like, like money mice come with weights. Of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it was like if you needed a bigger like palm rest for this side of your palm or something you could Just replace that part yeah. and yeah, or pull it out to widen the mouse and so it was it was somewhat modular and i used that mouse for years um until it oh, just wow. stopped working but um there was a there was a, a mouse that got a lot of attention uh, uh in the beast cast years uh the swift point you know that mm. one mm. i do not it was a mouse that was highly customizable but not um, but not to the degree of the sw- of changing the switches. It just had a lot of modular like pads for all the different buttons it had That's on like it. It's like a thumbstick oh. on this one. That's weird. Yeah, it's called the Swift Point Z. Right. Um, yeah. And I used yeah. one for about two years before it broke, and I did not. I I just never like was interested in in replacing it. Um, oh, weird. But you could, it had a lot of like gyroscoping functionality on it too. Yeah, I was going to say, it has it haptic had, feedback, it says. Like, it what, a, what did that so do? I'm, I need, so I, I've said this before, it's been a while. I want mice to have haptic feedback. I think mice should just have it the same way your controller has it. It's sure. what I'm missing from PC okay. gaming, especially with mouse and keyboard shooty shooties. Like, let's, <laughs> let's just do that and let's normalize it. Um, but this, but the problem with this is that it didn't. the The feedback was not. Uh, it was meant to give you like control cues. It wasn't meant to like uh, uh, respond to gameplay. Like it would like thump if you moused over a button, like that sort of stuff. No, like it wouldn't my even car do that. that. It was more like it was more like you could change the profile on it if you tilted it, and then it would buzz, and then you could like oh. click around and do shit like that. I'm sure somebody tried to to you know, customize or, or, or do something like that. It was a great mouse. Um, it did, I, I, I went through a few of them though. Like they, they start, they just started to like 
fail a little bit and i kind of but you could change out all the most of the pads most of the buttons you could like elongate some of the um some of the, the 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 buttons they had like push and pull buttons they had they had two separate buttons on the uh left and right click pad so like there was the left and right click and then maybe an inch below it was two more left and right clicks Mm. so you had to like gnarl up your fingers a little bit um it was cool but i would use a mouse glove oh i don't quite know how to describe this but like you take a mouse and you just put your hand in it and you just stuck there i i do that oh okay yeah mouse glove that's or you know i wonder if at some point like would a something that more closely mirrors like a VR controller or something. Could you mm. replace a mouse with something like that? And the, the, the fidelity of movement you get on, mm. on that, would that be an acceptable way to use a computer? Like maybe, eh, now that I'm thinking but you, about but it, without the holding you don't want to use it as a without... pointer. You don't want to use it as yeah. a pointer. Um, um, Logitech made something where it was a pointer. Remember that thing? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Dan good City you... in chat says, bring back the Novint Falcon. I have a Novint Falcon in my garage. Mm, I remember that thing. Yeah, I think a lot of those got converted into sex toys. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were like, you know what? We should just fuck this. Yeah. Just, oh, my like, gosh. Look yeah, at that thing. thing. Yeah. We, just, we got to stop using this for, for, for games. Get that gun attachment off. I've got an idea. Yeah. Um, we need to oh, be penetrated this by thing. this. That yeah. thing, there was one of those just hanging around the office for years. Yes, I have that here. Was that yes, it? Yeah. yeah. I, I brought, I brought, I brought that home. Um, <laughs> he brought back the good stuff. I brought it home. Uh, <laughs> and I remember the the Microsoft joystick. Like before, everyone had their newfangled Xbox 360 controllers and PC controls were a standard. When they had their their big force feedback joystick. And like Mech Warrior 2 was packed in or 3 or one of them was packed in with it because it would just go shtunk when you fired rockets and kind of just have oh, a neat. forward and then a backwards jerk and all these really neat effects that uh, that was like a really awesome. It's still some of the coolest like haptic feedback I think I've felt in a thing. But that thing was the demo that they used to demonstrate it in mm. stores or like push yeah. this button for a machine gun and then it'd rattle around and go, that's cool. It really rattles around. And you think about it. <laughs> playing a game like that you're like i would never use this it's it will make me less accurate uh especially you know in a multiplayer game this would be ridiculous i've never seen some of that now with the dual sense where people are like trying to decide right, yeah. if they want the the trigger feedback for the the realness of it or if they're like hey this makes it harder for me to shoot in call of duty um if you had that on a mouse you would straight off have to stabilize it in some way right because like a laser like that's that's tracking where you're yeah. going at like millimeters per second you know it's going to be yeah having it jerk vibrating. around in your hand it would yeah. probably be a little crazy but i yeah i, I yeah you're you're right i think there's i think my thing with mouse and keyboard is obviously you get the increased precision with a mouse like no mm-hmm. one you know let's not be crazy of course of course you get that mm-hmm. but then you lose analog movement on the left hand by going to the four keys yeah. on the keyboard yeah and i really appreciate that in games like the i'm gonna slowly move around this corner i'm gonna you know in the grand scheme of things having the more refined aim is is a bigger deal but i think that's part of why i gravitate towards using controllers in shooters even on pc um is I just, you know, with, with exceptions where like that just feels like wrong or or blasphemous, like when, you know, they put the Doom remakes out. I was like, I'm, this is a, this is a fucking mouse and keyboard game. Um, Quake. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, I there, so it almost feels like if, if you wanted to figure out the mouse part of that equation about like haptic feedback and stuff there, you almost then need to have a keyboard that has an analog something on it to give you that range of movement as well to really kind of make that whole i don't know maybe that doesn't matter as much but uh but i don't know but that's gonna do it for yeah, well, let me double check like, yeah it's tough yeah, I mean, I does feel, anyone, yeah. yeah do you yeah does anyone care about like that lack of I, analog I do. movement like that i used like i used to think about it all the time like uh, i want to say at one point 
analog switches in the in were like a thing. Like, wasn't there a time? I don't know if it was keyboard. Wasn't I think there someone a did analog switches? Like maybe not for right? the full keyboard, but for the WASD. Like they they made a anal- analog keys hmm. there to try to approximate that. that. Like that had to be a selling point for like a Logitech or Razor thing at one time, where they're like, mm-hmm. our new switches can measure a million points of like actuation. <laughs> uh, but I don't remember yeah. now, and obviously it didn't last or become a thing. Yeah, um, uh, some people are saying put a nunchuck in your left hand. Always comes back to the Wii, the real innovators. Oh yeah, yeah, it's um, um, I mean, but, that's uh, what you were doing, right? Um, yeah, right pretty much. Up. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know. I yeah. I don't know how. Like, I I don't know. Like you said, I know you said the aiming is the more advantageous thing. I don't know how much of my console call of duty is like that how much of the analog you know uh, left stick movement i am taking full advantage of right like it's pretty much on or off right like (laughs) it's so i don't know i think it's more maybe for i'm trying to think like if it's a single a single player campaign like where is it more useful and i would imagine competitively it's you know you you prioritize the aiming Definitely. Um, absolutely. But I, I feel like that's like some of that conversation has changed. Right. And maybe that's just like people being scrubs kind of blaming their shortcomings on aim assist or something like that. But I, I think mm-hmm. the conversation about like controller versus mouse and keyboard has changed a lot because because people using controllers in some games get that aim assist that you don't mm-hmm. get on a mouse. Um, mm-hmm. And, and the, they're trying also to often, balance that. God do get it on the mask but people aren't uh yes in some games you actually (laughs) yes some games fuck that up and that's always fun um and and yeah so like that conversation has changed a lot from where it used to be i mean it ain't all quake 3 on the dreamcast anymore um where what is no exactly you know someday we'll get back to that magic moment the zenith um yeah um all right that is gonna do it for us here I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thanks y'all for hanging out with me. Yeah. Answering these thank inane you. questions that uh, that are fantastic questions. I just ask them inanely. That's thanks to everyone who wrote in. Um, happy Hanukkah, what we got going everyone. On? We got uh, we got a yeah. yeah happy yeah happy Hanukkah happy uh, belated Thanksgiving. We're we're in it. There's like uh, oh ho, ho. Halo campaign is kind of like the last big 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 thing, and then there's a smattering of other releases and. It's the holidays. It's weird. It's like it just, I can't believe this year has like flashed by as fast as it has. It's crazy. It's insane. Yeah, 20, yeah 20, I mean, 2020, man. I can't believe it's finally over. Yeah, I know. Wow. Look, yeah, 2021 is uh, going to be my year, though. Just you wait. Yeah. I, I, oh, I, I will say November Hanukkah is, is kind of bullshit. I mean, <laughs> just if I could speak for all Jews everywhere. Um, Speak your what piece. are we doing here? What, what are we doing with this November stuff? It throws. It how throws does it, it off. get? Is it? Is it? How do they determine know, it's, the moon? It's, is it? Like, it's a. It is a lunar calendar, mm-hmm. I believe. Okay. Uh, you know, we do. It's a. It's a moon worship situation. Got it. Uh, it's a. <laughs> this is how that religion works. <laughs> a moon. Yeah. Uh, a moon <laughs> worship situation. The uh, oil magically you know, lasted these nights while the moon yeah. was dark. Right. So yeah. okay. It's, I get it's it. wild. I don't know how it really works. Uh, I'll probably offend a lot of people with my um, lack of knowledge there. But when you have it in November, it doesn't feel the same as when it's in December. Right. It's going to bleed into December because it's a million years long. But um, yeah, it, every now and then you get one of these wild little November things. So yeah. if you're bad for uh, uh, tomorrow when uh, Ramadan was on, when we were back living in London, uh, it was on in like the height of like august heat in london yeah which is like it's bad enough like it's hard <laughs> enough i should say not you know eating and, and drinking and and then when the days are that long and the the height, heat is that bad <laughs> i think it's like i think rabbit i think eid falls in like june now or something so it's not it's like may it's like not so bad mm. whereas mm. like yeah 
Christians <laughs> just arbitrarily picked some days based on some pagan shit. We're like, December 25th, that seems like a... Sure, let's do that. What's yeah, some we garbage consistent. we can co-opt for ourselves and just yeah. make it our own? What, what, can we, were, what can we just... What can we steal from some other culture and, and bring to yeah. us, right? Is that You were already yeah. celebrating something at Easter. How about... This guy comes back. To <laughs> what are we making about this thing? Hmm? What are we bringing our guy? Everyone loves this guy. Thing. Look at him. It's like the, the Stone Cold music s smashes and then, yeah. <laughs> what about this guy? Jesus comes out and yeah. smashes mashed potatoes and gravy together and pours them down his throat. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. yeah. I throw a turkey leg to Jesus. <laughs> Absolutely. You'd be the, you'd be the ring crew that would be hell in there yeah. flinging okay. turkey legs. All right. Here's a gravy boat. <laughs> you can't throw that. <laughs> Holy shit. It's like a toss up. I mean, Jesus could probably finagle Pass it and catch Jesus, it, right? Please. He'll probably figure out how to catch it. That guy, he's got hot hands. Hot hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to uh, the show this week. We'll uh, be back next week, I think, with another one of these fucking things. Uh, the uh, what? Uh, the voicemail dump truck is is happening Thursday, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Live. Yes. Live. Baby. Live. Live, baby. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it. We have people coming in to spray for bugs. Hmm. On God. There are spiders everywhere. Oh no! What? Embrace them. No, my my wife got a bunch of spider bites that were oh. very nasty. Jeez. And what? Um, yeah, um, she's healed. What from kind them. of spiders? Now, ones that left a bunch of marks on her that normal spiders don't. What? Okay. Um, oh. So we just keep finding spiders around the house, and that's not a good thing. So mm -hmm. they're going to come in and fill our house full of hot death juice or whatever the fuck they do. Um, and, oh, the kids uh, love they were that. there first. They were yeah. there first. We have to, so we have to. Point being, we have to be out of the house for a while. So I don't know if I'll sure. be yeah. there for oh, the yeah. dump truck. Um, but I played uh, that hit my level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, take care, everybody. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you soon. Bye. Later.